Playoff Hockey is brought to you by Bud Ice, the official beer sponsor of the NHL. Your Missouri, Illinois, Lincoln Mercury dealers. McDonald's, proud sponsors of the Blues. Have you had your break today? Southwest Airlines, fly Southwest, the low fare airline. Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. The Discover card, it pays to discover. Your Midwest GMC truck dealers, Bellman, Bomberito, and Brockland GMC. Boatman's with home equity loans designed to do just one sensible thing, save you money. Your neighborhood, St. Louis Chrysler Plymouth dealers. CMS Home Mortgage Corporation. When the bank says no, CMS says yes. Hardy, starring the best fried chicken in the game today. And by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Monday night in St. Louis, the first overtime of this series. The Canucks early in the overtime, a two-on-one. The pass to Cliff Ronning, great fake on John Casey. Ronning scores. The Canucks win it 6-5 in overtime and take a 3-2 lead in the best of seven series, which returns tonight to beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. It is Western Conference quarterfinal series, game number six. And the site is the Pacific Coliseum, where the Blues have played four times this season, two victories and two losses. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Canada. Ken Wilson along with Joe Micheletti and Bruce Affleck. The Blues must win. The Canucks can move to the second round with a victory. Joe, it's pretty simple from the Blues' point of view here. It's not complicated at all. It seemingly is up to Curtis Joseph. Yeah, it really is. We talked about it, and it's an old cliche. You have to have great goaltending in the playoffs to be successful. Up to this point, he has struggled, as has John Casey. It's been a very difficult series. All his statistics from the regular season, much lower in the playoffs. Curtis, to say the least, has at times been fighting the puck. Yeah, even on uh, easy shots with no one around, he seems to be off balance, trying to get a, a good view of the puck. And when he starts doing that, you know that his confidence is not at the type of level we've seen it in the past. On the other side, Kirk McLean has been brilliant, and he has been shaky. Well, he's been able to make the key saves, especially on breakaways. Brett Hall last game had a couple of breakaways. Kirk McLean was right there to make the save. In the last eight minutes of game number five, he was outstanding. And as far as the Vancouver Canucks are concerned, on the brink of a series victory here, they, Joe, are without one of their key players, defenseman Jeff Brown. But the Blues now are without Brendan Shanahan. And you can't replace a player like Brendan Shanahan. He's too good, he's too important. But what the Blues need to do, they need to have some of their other players, three or four of them, come to the fold tonight and move up and really help this team. Brendan fracturing an ankle in game five. Uh, a play where he and Gino Ojic came together. Their skates met. Brendan's right ankle turned over, did not give on the ice, and he's out for the rest of the series and probably the rest of the playoffs. I think there's a lot of surprise that this series has not been more defensive oriented. Uh, lots of uh, odd man breaks and breakaways. Yeah, this has really been a strange series. Everyone thought it was going to be a goaltending battle. Hasn't really turned out to be that. And for the Blues, they played so well during the course of the regular season, not giving up the two-on-ones and three-on-twos. It's been totally different in this series. And with all of Vancouver's firepower up front, the Blues can't afford to do that tonight. And Bruce Affleck, Mike Keenan saying just a few moments ago, both teams are taking a lot of risk taking and that's why we have seen so many odd man breaks and of course one of the big stories has been the fact that the Canucks have scored a record five shorthanded goals. There's no question special teams have hurt the St. Louis Blues and special teams are so important so it really dictates what the other team will do. I don't think Vancouver's afraid to take a penalty right now. They got the two shorthanded goals in 17 seconds in game number five a new playoff record. Plus, they've got five shorthanded goals, as you mentioned, Ken, in the series, which ties an NHL record. Calgary, of course, has also got five in their series. They've outscored us 12 to 5 on special teams. You don't have to look past game five. The Blues had a great opportunity late in the third period. The game tied on the power play, and Vancouver does a great job of killing it off. And they go into the overtime, kill off that portion of it, and then they get their own goal at even strength. So Blues uh, not doing very well on special teams. They have to have patience and discipline this game. There's no tomorrow, obviously. It's some old cliches we can all use. This is like game seven right now. They have to win two in a row, obviously. You can bet that all the players, coaches, myself, lucky ties, we're all trying to do anything we can to get a victory here tonight. All right, Bruce Affleck, the teams are on the ice. We're just about ready to go. It's game six at the Pacific Coliseum. The Blues are here to take on the Vancouver Canucks. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. 
bursting in air gay proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the Richard Loney with tonight's American and Canadian National Anthems. The goaltenders for tonight's game, Curtis Joseph back in goal for the St. Louis Blues, and the Blues looking for a big game out of him. And in goal for the Vancouver Canucks, also Kirk McLean, who has played in the previous five games as well. The starting goaltenders are brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Fly Southwest, the low fare airline. The officials for tonight's game, our referee will be Bill McCreary, the linesman, Leon Stickle, and Brian Murphy. This crowd here in Vancouver is noisy. They are ready to celebrate and get ready for the second round of the playoffs. The Blues know they must win to force game seven at Kiel Center in St. Louis on Friday night. Ian LaPerriere will face off with Cliff Ronning. The crowd roaring and the puck drop. LaPerrier slides it back to McInnes. He gives it to Barron, who works to the red line and shoots the puck in. Wide of the net. LaPerrier taken out by Merzen in the corner. Ronning gets the puck, tries to clear. Can't right point. McInnes a shot. And it deflects off Ronning and Lume. And it's cleared out and brought back in offside by McInnes. Mike. Keenan starting LaPerriere on a line with Hull and Tikkanen here at the outset. And the Blues with some early pressure getting the puck into the Vancouver zone. That's something they're going to have to try and continue to do tonight. Meanwhile, the Vancouver Canucks are expecting a very physical game out of Mike Keenan and the Blues. They expect their forwards to really try and help out, and they're hoping for a great start. Neutral faceoff. McKinnis shoots the puck in near corner. Here's Jurkay Lume playing it far side. Up to Momesso. He can't get it out. McKinnis keeps it in. His pass shot hits a leg. Then the puck high in the air over the glass below us. And into the crowd. The Canucks starting Momesso and Oksuda with Ronning. Two huge wingers with a diminutive center. And now the Blues are going to change players and likewise the Canucks and what Rick Lee the Vancouver coach is looking for in this game he's looking for his team to play with the same grit and toughness as they did in game five and again I mentioned that they want a good start that's because they've had difficulty during the course of the regular season at home getting off to a good start neutral face off Linden in front of his bench battling Norton Linden shoots a puck in Joseph out of the net plays it to Duchesne, he gets hit near side to Norton, up to Gilbert and the Blues, work to center ice. Gilbert from the red line, fires it in. Anderson lets the puck go. Duchesne works in, good chance, shoots! And McLean the save, rebound, Creighton a backhander. Stopped by Kirk McLean. 
Blues are all over the Canucks. Here's Creighton stealing, working in front. He gets poked, Jack Puck kept in at the blue line. Duchesne shot block, Norton works in front, can't get a shot. Poke check by McLean. Pavel Bure stick handles to his own blue line. He's at the red line. He's into the blue zone. On his backhand, a shot. Joseph the save. And the rebound controlled by Duchesne. Oh, he can electrify any crowd. Pavel Bure. Norton clears out of his own zone. Too far for Anderson. Both teams are changing. Jeff Gordon all at center ice. Shoots the puck in, headed wide. Stopped by Joseph for Holder. He's hit by Baranek. Then Todd Ellick there. Up for Karamnov, who's in the lineup, replacing Shanahan in the pass too far. Lume in his own end, feeds off far side. A pass for Jeff Gortnall too far from Cullimore, and it's Doug Lidster, the ex-Canuck in his own end. Up to Roberts at center ice, and the rookie poke check at the Vancouver line. Then Ellick gets the puck and backhands it in. Ellick, Roberts, and Karamnov. Here's McLean way over in the corner. Puck bounds in front. It's loose. Ellick down in the net. Blues can't get a shot. McLean back in the goal. Lume with a puck for Vancouver. Lifts it to center ice. Glove down by Holder. He shoots it in right on goal. And the two teams changing again. Cullimore looks up ice. A pass at the red line. Intercepted. Carboneau working in. Carboneau held off. Loose puck. Chasse has it. Centering for McRae. And the puck knocked away. And Lume feeds it to center ice to Tim Hunter. Hunter. Gets the puck ahead, and it's shot in by Jackson. Rutu, the other forward. Joseph clears to the corner. Christian Rutu there with Dane Jackson. Jackson hit by Carbono. Now Hunter bumped from behind, knocked down by McInnes. But the Canucks keep possession in the Blues end. Jackson dumped. Carbono sends the puck to McInnes behind the net. Hunter, a big hit on Carbono. McInnes up for McRae too far. Mark Watton shoots the puck in, and Barron has it. At his own line, far wing off the skate of Carbono. Then Watton with a puck, sends it ahead, and McInnes feeds out to center ice to Carbono. He's at the red line, and he'll backhand it in. Here's Dave Babbage. Both teams changing. Babbage circling in his own end to the youngster Watton off the near boards. Nice pass, and then Oksuda's feed eludes Ronnie. At center ice, Oksuda hit. Norton with a puck, and he loses it. Ronnie works in. Ronnie on the right wing. Ronnie stops. Ronning to the blue line to Lume along the boards into the corner chased by Tegan in behind the net trying to center he can't leaves the puck in the far corner for Roman Oksuda. Oksuda works to the slot weaves back top of the left wing circle now feeds behind the net and Hull intercepts clears to center ice Watton with a puck he's checked by LaPerriere then LaPerriere shoots the puck in and the teams are changing again four minutes gone no score first period in game six. Lume a pass to the red line. Knocking the puck in is Momesso. It goes wide of the Blues net. And it's Bill Holder with a puck. Rink wide in his own zone to Creighton. He leads the attack to the red line. Into the Vancouver zone. Creighton a rich shot right on save. Oh, and Anderson fans on the rebound. Creighton from behind the net trying to work in front does. Then it's played by Gilbert to Lidster. Right wing for Anderson into the corner. Centers and... Mers that knocks Gilbert down. Creighton shoots the puck behind the Canucks net. Linden gets it. Can't clear it out. Kept in by Gilbert. A pass for Creighton behind the goal off his stick. Merzen can't clear the puck out. Kicks it back to Yerke Lume. Lume is number 21 and he'll rifle the puck the length of the ice. The Blues have come out and played very well here in the first period. Holder touches the puck. An icing call against Vancouver. No score. Neither team has had a shot on goal. Now they'll give the Canucks a shot on goal. And this is St. Louis Blues hockey. The Blues are going to have to try and stay close to number 10. Pavo Burry, when he's got room, he's dangerous. He ended up with a backhand shot. Joseph was able to make the save, and then the Blues were able to cover up. Neither team has scored. First period face off near the Vancouver net. Ellick will try to win the draw, but Baranek takes it. Slides the puck behind his net up the near side. Too far for Russ Courtnell. Left point. Barron a shot. And it's blocked by Baranek and McInnes at his own line. Feeds off far wing for Ellick. Ahead for Karamnov. Chasing the puck down deep in the Vancouver end. Karamnov behind the net. Check. Loose puck in the corner. Russ Courtnell leaves it. Karamnov has it. Now to Todd Ellick. He looks left point. And tries to feed in front. Puck slides behind the Canucks net. And Baranek, who's lost his helmet, gets it. Feeds it ahead to Jeff Gordon. All not out. Roberts a shot. Knocked out. Oh, in front. 
neither Alec nor Karamnov can reach the clock and here comes Vancouver a pass for Russ Courtnall too far from Jeff Courtnall McKinnis back to play the puck to Roberts the Canucks have done a lot of hitting in the blue zone here's a right point shot from Babbage over the net Le Perrier gets the puck ahead to McKinnis nice feed in the middle of the rink to Roberts and as he heads to the bench he'll shoot the puck in both teams are changing Vancouver's Hedekin behind his net fires off the far glass Tikkanen kicks the puck centers Hall shoots he scores Brad Hall Hall oh, the Blues get a key early goal here at 556 of the first period from the slot Brad Hall buries it and it was Ian LaPerriere on the play, forcing Hedekin. He tried to get through. Hedekin had good control, went around the net, and then he tries to go back the other way. LaPerriere was there, forced him back. Now on the other side is Essa Tekin, and he kicks the puck with his skate and then sets up Brett Hall perfectly, and Hall with the one-timer just rifles it past McLean, and the Blues lead it 1-0 for Tekin in his first point of the series. For Hall, his fourth goal, his fifth point. Blues get the puck out. Here's Babbage in his own end over to Hedekin. Tekin and hits him at center ice. LaPerriere with a puck, and he'll lose it. Now Trevor Linden, a pass too far for Bure. Hall to LaPerriere, back to Hall. He'll shoot it in from the red line, wide of the Vancouver net. And the Blues are changing. Hedekin flies up the left wing, shoots the puck in, and Doug Lidster back to play it. Lidster behind his net. He's checked by Linden. Lidster gives the puck to Holder up the right wing. At center ice, Chasse to McRae. Drop pass for Chasse, intercepted. Loose puck in front, and Chasse can't get it all. And McRae, a shot may have hit the post, or else the skate of McLean. Right point, Lidster, a drive wide. And here's Vancouver to center ice. Ojic feeds over left wing, Cullimore, Bure to the net. Shot off the end board, sign of the net, knocked away by Joseph. Blues lead at one nothing. Lidster a pass, too far for Carbono, and he'll slide the puck out. Hall scores at 5.56, his fourth from Tikkanen, and the Blues lead it one to nothing. Now the Blues work to center ice. Lume gets the puck, shoots it in, and Lidster clears it out. At center ice, Chasse left wing to Gilbert, but the Blues are offside. Blues up one nothing in the opening period here in game six, and this is St. Louis Blues hockey. Athletic play from Essa taking in the puck bouncing a good foot in the air and he reaches behind him with his right foot Kicks it back and quickly Brett Hall gets into position and scores the first goal of the game Blues have the puck at center ice McKinnis shoots it into the Vancouver end and back to play it is Mark Watt in the 21 year old He loses it Creighton in front to Gilbert and a little behind the back shot knocked away by Lume right point McKinnis shot partially blocked and the Canucks clear the puck out. Here's Murray Barron at center ice. Now over the Vancouver line. Quick shot. And a pad save by McLean on Barron. And Lume clears the puck into the crowd. Just two seconds shy of the eight-minute mark here in the first period. The Blues have five of the six shots on goal here in this first period. And Kenny, it's been very evident in the opening part of this game. Remember we talked about Vancouver wanted to get off to a good start and not be scored upon first. That has happened with the Blues taking the one nothing lead. The other thing that's been very apparent is that they've been forcing the Vancouver defensemen to throw the, bucks, uh, the puck along the glass and along the boards. Generally, they like to go up the middle with the long passes. They haven't had time to do that thus far. A false start and they face off in the Vancouver zone to Kirk McLean's left and they'll drop the puck again Karamnov on with Ellick and Roberts Norton at the left point Duchesne at the right point Roberts can't win the face off Ronning does and here is Hedekin up for Oksuda at his own line Oksuda now in the middle to Dave Babbage he'll shoot the puck in knocked out at the Blues defense by Norton played across the ice for Duchesne up the far wing to Karamnov. He'll fire the puck in. And McLean out of the crease slides it into the corner. Played by Babbage ahead and chopped down the ice by Momesso. There's no icing. Norton back. Now behind the play, there'll be a penalty. Bill McCreary is going to call the first penalty of the game back near the Vancouver blue line. One of the Canuck players was knocked down. Another may have been high sticked and 
Steve Duchesne, the Blues veteran defenseman, goes to the penalty box. He'll go off for high sticking, and Bruce Affleck talked about this at the start of the game, the differential in the two special teams of both teams. Vancouver with seven power play goals thus far in the series. And what the Blues really need to try and watch, and it's very difficult, Cliff Ronning will be on the right boards trying to set things up. Now, Steve Duchesne had pinched up on the play and ended up getting his stick up just prior to the red line on Brett Hedekin of the Vancouver Canucks, I believe, so he goes off for high sticking. But the key player on this Vancouver power play has been Cliff Ronning from the sideboards. Canucks 7 for 33 on the power play. They win the faceoff right point. Bure faking a shot. Now he'll shoot, and it's knocked down. Trevor Linden on the far side. Lumes at the left point. Bure at the right point. Ronning in the corner. Trying to pull away from McKinnis. Works behind the net. Down to the near corner. Feeds right point to Bure. Left point to Lume. Shot, and that goes wide. Now the loose puck in the Blues end, and Barron gets it, and he'll shoot the puck the length of the ice, and then he slashes Trevor Linden. He looks the other way, doesn't even pay any attention. Didn't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Blues are shorthanded. Ronning in his own end. Knocked down by Carbono, who steals the puck. Carbono loses it in his skates, and Ronning to center ice. Ronning checked again by Carbono, gets away again. Feeds over to Lume into the Blues zone, right wing, Jeff Courtnall. He stops, feeds to the point to Bure. Now to Jeff Courtnall, a shot, and Joseph makes the save. Now the Blues get the puck, and here's Carbono, and he'll wheel and shoot at the length of the ice. Now just under a minute to go in the Vancouver power play. And one of the reasons why their power play has been successful, they plant Trevor Linden when he's out there in front of Curtis Joseph, and now Momesso, also big and tough to move out of the front of the net, he'll be there as well. The attack stopped at the St. Louis line. LaPerrier dumps the puck in. He's killing the penalty with Tikkanen, McKinnis, and Barron. Blues have done a good job in this shorthanded situation. Just coming up to the 10-minute mark of the first period, 1-0 St. Louis. Babich in over the line, trying to get around Barron, almost does. Then Baranek with a puck as it's stolen by Tikkanen. He'll fire it up the boards and out to center ice. 18 seconds left in the Duchesne penalty. In the neutral zone, Russ Courtnall giving the puck to Babich. Now to Cullimore, a right wing feed. And Momesso tips the puck in. McKinnis back to get it, wheels behind the net, and fires the puck to center ice off Cullimore to Tikkanen. Tikkanen stops, shot, and it goes wide. Duchesne back on, Blues at full strength. The Canucks trailing 1 0 in their own end. Baranek a pass over the stick of Babbage. Now Lidster from center ice dumps the puck in and ends up behind the Canucks net. McLean feeds it up the boards for Momesso. He's checked. Right point. Lidster a shot. And that in front hits defenseman Cullimore up to Russ Courtnall. Stopped at center ice and Creighton backhands it in. Oh, he gets drilled down big time by Baranek. Now the players shoving. Creighton trying to bump. Baranek won't let him go, and it's center ice. Holder has the puck ahead to Gilbert. He'll shoot it in. The Blues have carried the play in the first period, though Vancouver has been quite physical. Now Gilbert steals side of the net to Alec. Alec behind the Vancouver net, tied up by Watton. Loose puck, and the Canucks take over. Hunter a pass ahead, and it's too far for Ojek, and the puck slides to Joseph. He'll leave it there. Played by Jeff Norton. Norton up to Roberts in his own end. He gets crunched, clears it ahead to Ellick. Now with Karamnoff and Duchesne over the line behind the net. Ellick centers! And tied up is the Blues player Karamnoff and the Canucks work out. Lume in the center circle. To Rutu, long shot, and Joseph makes the save. And Jeff Norton with a puck. The Canucks are changing. It's center ice to Karamnoff. He gives it away. Here's Oksuda, but away from the play, Momesso will pick up a cross-checking penalty. And the Blues, already with a 1-0 lead, will have their first power play. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. With the Blues leading 1-0, 8.09 left to go in this first period. The Blues will go on the power play. Sergio Momesso goes off for cross-checking. It happened in the neutral zone area. He was tied up with one of the Blues players. That was an earlier hit, Momesso on Adam Creighton, but he cross-checked Vitaly Karamnov, and now the Blues have the power play. And it's McInnes, quarterbacking at center ice, right wing to Tekin, and quick shot, and a glove save by McLean. And he'll hold on, and we'll have a face-off deep. 
in the Vancouver end. 11.51, the time of the Momesso cross-checking penalty. And the Blues in this series on the power play, 5 for 32 and 1 for 12 in this building. And Essa Tegan responded the, this morning at the morning skate regarding the criticism that he has been taken from head coach Mike Keenan. And he just basically said, hey, when you're a good hockey player, you forget about the criticism from the coach or anybody else. You go out and you play hard and you do your best. He's Mike, had a good start. Mike Keenan before the game again pointing out that both Essa Tekinen and Glenn Anderson have not played well. Here's Tekinen on the far boards. Blues up 1-0. They have the man advantage. Hull moves to the right point. Now weaves in towards the slot. Tekinen still with a puck. McKinnis the lone player back at the blue line. Tekinen faking, still faking. Feeds behind the net. Whirling with a puck, LaPerriere checked by Merza. Now Tikkanen and Merzen go down. Here's LaPerriere out of the corner in front to Shane, and he'll shoot wide. Not much of a shot. Puck was bouncing. LaPerriere's centering effort knocked to the corner. Hull left point to Duchesne, and a pass across, batted away by Rutu, all the way back into the Blues' end. A minute five to go in the Momesso penalty. Duchesne behind the Blues net, working Thank up ice. Pardon me, Ken, but now is where the Blues have to be aware. The second part of this penalty, of this power play, they've got Burry and Russ Court all on the ice. That's where they like to use them when the power play unit is a little bit tired. Duchesne failed to reach the red line, shooting it in, and an icing call against the Blues, who lead it one nothing. Let's pause here. Five seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. And now Mike Keenan makes a change. He gets five fresh players out on the ice. It's a smart play. Face off to Curtis Joseph's left. Russ Courtnall loses the draw to Creighton. Holder to Ellick. Ellick in the corner to Holder. Under some pressure from behind his net. Blues have the man advantage. Up the right wing to Creighton at his own line. In the middle to Holder. Up to the red line. Holder into the Vancouver zone. Right wing for Creighton. He'll stop. Feeds to the blue line to Roberts. Back for Creighton. Puck skips away. He'll tip it in the corner to Alec. Alec side of the networks in front of Shaw. And McLean stops Alec. Canucks can't clear. Near point holder. Over to the far point to Jeff Norton. Ahead for Alec. Now to Norton at the blue line. He winds up. Shot right on. And McLean the save on Norton. Canucks to center ice. Offside. The pass from Hedekin in his own end. Over the center checkered red line to Russ Courtenall. And he's not happy with the offside call by linesman Brian Murphy. Well, that was nearly a two-on-one with Burry and Cortnell on the long pass. Meanwhile, just prior to all that, the Blues have had some success scoring along the side of the net. Todd Ellick tries to jam it in, and a good save by Kirk McLean, just holding his ground on the post and able to make the save with his stick. McLean seemingly has problems when the puck gets down at his feet. Very much a stand-up goalie. You shoot from away. He has been very tough. You get in that crease area and sometimes he loses the puck. Now the Blues with 14 seconds to go in the power play. Face off in the Vancouver end. LaPerriere after the puck. He's taken down. Hedekin spun around by Barron along the near boards. And the puck held for another face off with six seconds to go in this St. Louis man advantage and 6.15 remaining in the first period. The Blues have a 1-0 lead. Well, in this situation certainly isn't new to Mike Keenan. Remember last year in the series against the New Jersey Devils, they had lost game five at home, trailing the series three to two, going back to New Jersey. And they were able, of course, to win that game and then win game seven in overtime. Did he charter to New Jersey? <laughs> Here's the faceoff in the Vancouver end. Blues have had great travel. They have been chartering all over North America, and of course, a lot of travel in this series. Blues win the draw. Barron shoots, and McLean a stick save. Dane Jackson with a puck up to Momesso, stepping onto the ice from the penalty box. He's stopped, and McKinnis chops at the puck. It goes high in the air. And a loose puck for Dave Babich. In the middle to Linden, over the line. Cutting in on his backhand, a shot, and Joseph the save. Al McKinnis gets the puck. Feeds it up ice to LaPerriere, right wing to Hall over the line, and the play offside. Tekin in on the near left wing, moves in over the blue line. Uh, the the puck. The and there's 5.46 to overtime. go in the first period that the Blues have pretty well dominated. Now Trevor Linden going right up the middle of the ice, gets the pass, has to go on his backhand. Good positioning by Joseph. 
the backhand shot. He's able to get the pads together and make the save on Linden. It's something the Blues have done well in this period. The defenseman, the forward, coming back to the net. The rebound is there, but Al McKinnis followed up, got the puck, and was able to easily move it out of his own zone. Face off at center ice. Creighton backhands the puck in. Boy, if the Blues could get a good lead and hold it for a while, let Curtis Joseph gain some confidence as the game goes on, that would be a big help. Canucks to center ice. Trevor Linden to Bure. He'll shoot it in wide. Joseph with a puck. Backhands it high in the air to center ice. Jason Cullimore back in his own end. Just hands the puck in the neutral zone to Duchesne. Ahead for Creighton over the line. He shoots and fires just wide. Anderson after the puck lets it go. Duchesne flips it ahead, but over the glass and into the crowd. And we'll have a faceoff with 5.15 to go here in the opening period of game number six. Steve Duchesne and his partner, Jeff Norton, had a tough game in game five in St. Louis, both minus four, but that has been probably the best pair for the last month and a half or so the Blues have had, moving the puck scoring some points and they've had a good start in this game again I mentioned in this period the Blues are doing a very good job they're not getting into trouble in their own zone Vancouver is trying to get in and forecheck but the Blues forwards are holding up the Vancouver forwards and allowing Duchesne and Norton and the rest of the defense to go back get the puck and make an easy pass coming out of their own zone face off outside the Vancouver blue line Canucks control Merzen shoots the puck into the St. Louis end Holder will go back he's teamed on defense with Lidster Carbono centering Chasse and McRae. Holder behind the net. Four checked by Linden, who is centering Ojek and Gure. Blues can't get out. Here's Trevor Linden near the blue line. Shoots the puck into the corner. Lidster there. Now behind the net. Runs into Bure. Puck up to McRae. And he'll clear to center ice. Here K. Lume. Stick handling with a puck. And he shoots it back in. Brett Hall has scored the only goal here in the first period. Blues under pressure in their own end. Bure and Linden steal. Linden in the corner. He gets hit by Carbono. Puck behind the Blues net. Oh, nice poke check by Holder on Bure. And here is Basil McRae. In his own zone. Fires the puck ahead. It'll trickle right to goaltender Kirk McLean. He leaves the puck behind the net for Merzen, chopping it to the corner. Carbono steals. And he centers, but onto the stick of Ronnie. Here come the Canucks. Three on three. Ronnie over the line. Bumped by McInnes. Gets away. Feeds in front, and the puck deflects right to Joseph, who grabs it and flips it to Chasse. He stopped at center ice. Ronnie to Babbage. Now ahead to. Oksuda and he'll backhand the puck in. Blues are changing. Here's McKinnis behind his net. Under four minutes to go in the first period. A long pass too far for Karamnov. The puck all the way to Kirk McLean. Hedekin back. Fires it ahead. Momesso now to Ronnie at center ice. To Russ Courtnall. Looking for Momesso. He'll shoot on a great block by Norton. Up to Karamnov. He can't clear. Ronnie keeps it in. Fires the puck behind the Blues net. Steve Duchesne with it. He'll flip it to center ice. Gloved down by Dave Babbage. Babbage works in. Trying to move around Norton Kent. Ellick gets the puck. Feeds it to Duchesne. Ahead at center ice to Karamnov. Left wing for Roberts. Trying to move in. Flips the puck behind the net. Jeff Cortnall back. Fires off the far boards for Ronnie, who's been out there forever. He just shovels the puck to center ice. The two teams are changing. Here's Duchesne at his own line. Steve Duchesne advances to the red line and fires the puck in. It hits the end boards and dies. Lume behind his net. Skates in his own zone. Flips the puck ahead. Gloved down by Holder and he'll shoot it in. And the play is offside. There's 252 remaining. First period in Vancouver. The Blues lead it one to nothing. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Welcome back to Vancouver. Ken Wilson, Joe Micheletti, Bruce Affleck. Late in the first period. Brett Hall has scored. The Blues must win. And they lead 1-0. Canucks from center ice shoot the puck in. Joseph into the corner. Settles the puck down for McKinnis. He's on with Holder. Left wing for Tekin and too far. It's center ice Lume backing into his own territory. Across the way for Merzen. Now to Veranic. Up the left wing to Jeff Cortnall. He'll shoot the puck in. Holder gets it out. Tekin and taken down. Then stealing the puck. It's LaPerriere. There's going to be a penalty. A shot. But LaPerriere touches the puck. And the penalty will be called, and it'll be against the Blues. Essa Tikkanen with 2.24 to go in the second period. So Tikkanen takes a penalty 
out in the neutral zone. Meanwhile, in Toronto, the Toronto Maple Leafs staying alive. They have scored in overtime to beat the Chicago Blackhawks 5-4. Toronto led late in the third period, 4-2. Hawks got two to tie it, but Toronto wins it in overtime. Randy Wood gets the goal, and that series tied at three. It goes back now to Chicago. And Daryl Sutter had the ro rotating goaltenders in that game late in the second period when Toronto took a 3 to 1 lead. He removed Ed Bell for for the game and then halfway through the third period when Chicago came back to make it 4 3 they were trailing by a goal. He reinserted Ed Bell for but Toronto fought back and after being tied they come back to win it in overtime. San Jose has a goal in the first period against Calgary. They lead one nothing there now. Buck shot the length of the ice by the Canucks. McKinnis back touches oh, it. An icing call, call against Vancouver. Taking it, taking a holding penalty at 17-36. Hey, hockey fans, get over to Metro Lighting. Cool off with Emerson Attic fans and ceiling fans. At Metro Lighting, they're priced to sell right now. Well, this is the second power play opportunity for the Vancouver Canucks the first time they had it we talked about Ronning on the sideboards Guy Carbono had done a terrific job putting pressure on Ronning not letting him have enough time to make the plays power play Vancouver they're 0 for 1 two of their four shots in the period came on the power play Ronning into the blue zone flings the puck across the ice far point Lumet sends it behind the net here's Jeff Courtnall near side to Cliff Ronning Right point to Pavel Bure. Left point to Yurke Lume. Jeff Kortnall's in front. Far side Linden. Ronning's behind the net. Now trouble on the far side for Linden. Blues, however, can't clear the puck out. Kept in. Bure in front off the skater Ronning behind the net. McKinnis shoveling the puck up the boards and it's slapped down the ice by Barron. There's one minute to go in the Tekken in penalty. 124 to go in the period. Blues lead 1-0. They have outshot Vancouver 9-4. Bure skates with a puck out of his own end. Left wing to the speedster, Russ Cordenall. Into the blue zone, drops the puck for Lume. Right wing circle for Bure, back to the blue line. Now straight away to Lume. He'll shoot, oh, blocked by LaPerriere. Lume gets the puck again on the far left wing boards. Now skates back to the blue line, feeds it near point to Bure. Ahead along the boards to Ronnie. Ronning stick handles top of the right wing circle fakes a shot in front Russ Courtnall stopped by Joseph after a setup by Jeff Courtnall couple of good quick passes Joe by the Canucks and that creates an excellent opportunity on the power play that was the one time that Ronning had time from the sideboard to make the play and he'll just move in when he finally does get pressure you see Norton back off and then he comes after him then the quick passes Joseph made one save then also had to make another save on the rebound attempt Ronning fake shot then the quick passes boy that's a fine save by Curtis Joseph and he was able to make one save and then again the rebound Brett Hall scored from Tekken at 556 the only goal of the period face off Babbage from the point a shot blocked by Carbono. 20 seconds to go in Tekkenen's penalty. Momesso a drive. Hits McKinnis in the corner. McKinnis ties up Momesso and Carbono. Whips the puck the length of the ice. 33 seconds left in the period. Oh, it's been an excellent period for the Blues. Now the Canucks on the attack at center ice. Joseph Ferranic behind the back to Hedekin. On the near wing into the blue zone. He's tripped up by Hall. Tekkenen is on. Loose puck. Chopped at. Up the boards to Tekkenen. In the middle to Hall. 15 seconds to go in the period. Hall into the Vancouver zone. On the right wing, a shot blocked by Babbage. Loose puck in front. Hall shoots. He scores! Brad Hall recovers. Sends a backhander by Kirk McLean. Oh, baby! Brad Hall has scored twice in the first period, and the Blues lead it 2 to nothing. And Tekkenen started the play coming out of the penalty box. He just makes a little pass to Hall. Now, Russ Courtnell is a forward getting caught on defense. He's a little confused. The first shot by Hall is blocked, and then he just follows it up. Courtnell goes past the puck, and Hall is all alone on the backhand. He lets it go quickly. Kirk McLean got a piece of it, and with eight seconds to go, the Blues score again. Brett Hall, and they lead it two to nothing. From the faceoff at center ice, the puck into the Blues end, and that's going to do it. 
that is the end of the first period. A fabulous period for the Blues. They outshoot Vancouver 10-5. Hall scores from Tikkanen at 556. Hall scores from Tikkanen at 1951. And in game six, a game the Blues must win, they lead the Canucks after one period, two to nothing. Coming up in this intermission, Bruce Affleck will visit with Cliff Ronning of the Canucks. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Vancouver. And going into the second period, thanks to a pair of Brett Hall goals, the Blues lead the Canucks two to nothing. It's not hockey without ice. Bud Ice and Bud Ice Light, the official beer sponsor of the NHL. Well, Saturday night at Keel Center, the Stampede in Arena Football taking on Connecticut. 291-7600 is the phone number to purchase tickets and of course you can get your tickets at the Keel Center box office. The Stampede entertaining Connecticut Saturday night in arena football at Keel Center. Well Brett Hall was saying this morning when asked about whether he has to do anything to change his game for this pivotal game six and he said no not at all you can't change now you just have to go out and keep doing the same things that you've always done and try not to think about it too much. Just go out and play. Well, he's done that in the first period with both of the Blues goals. Two goals on two shots. He had eight shifts, played over seven minutes in that period. Al McGinnis played almost nine minutes of the period. How about Yerke Lume, who's on the ice here, as is McGinnis. Lume played almost 11 of the 20 minutes. He's been a real workhorse. Yeah, he's been averaging on a per-game basis about 35 minutes per game. Puck deep in the Canuck zone. LaPerriere for checking, trying to steal. He battles in the corner, has the puck behind the net to Tikkanen. Out to the left point. Barron, slap shot, pad save, rebound, hole stop. Oh, and LaPerriere shoots wide on a second rebound. Here's Linden, an outlet pass at center ice. Mers and crunch by Barron. Then McKinnis back to get the puck away from Bure and shoot it up the boards. At center ice, it skips past LaPerriere. And the aforementioned Yerke Lume deep in his own end for Vancouver. First minute of the second period, Blues lead 2-0 and away from the play. Tikkanen gets tied up with Merzen, and Merzen, I believe, is going to receive a interference penalty, an interference penalty on Dana Merzen. Now in front of the benches to Shane and Lume and Ojek and Norton get involved, do some bumping and some shoving. The Blues came out with a great start to this second period. Right off the faceoff, they ended up putting some pressure on. The long shot, first of all, from Barron. The save is made by McLean, and the Blues get right on the loose puck. Hull was there, takes a shot, and again, McLean is able to make the save with the blocker. And then Ian LaPerriere on the rebound just missed a wide-open net. Trying to go up top, he fired it over the top of the net. And the penalty, it was behind the play. Number 10 is taken in. Number 5, Dana Merzen. Merzen just simply won't let him go. Taken in trying to get away. And the referee is right there. McCreary's watching this as the play is going up the ice the other way. And he makes a call. And Dana Merzen goes off. And the Blues, with an opportunity to get their third goal of the night, go on the power play. 47 seconds of the second period, the time. Blues 0 for 1 on the power play. They had three shots on their initial power play. Neutral faceoff, Rutu wins the draw. Rutu is on with Jackson, Cullimore, and Babich, and Cullimore clears the puck out. Here's Norton, pursued by Rutu, leaving the puck for Holder. Now to Roberts, ahead to Anderson, over the line. Glenn Anderson centers, and the pass behind Creighton. Norton pinches in. Norton behind the Canucks, net in front for Creighton. It gets past him. Right point, Bill Holder. Near side for Norton. He works out to the right point. Holders at the left point. Near wing circle Anderson. Blues have the man advantage. Trying to take a 3-0 lead. In the corner to Dave Roberts. The rookie gets hit. Feeds to Anderson. Centering effort hits the back of the net. Holder pinches in. Then Cullimore checks Anderson. Creighton checked by Cullimore. In the far corner. Then the puck brought out by Roberts to Holder. Near point to Norton. In the near corner to Roberts. Dave Roberts 
Side of the net for Anderson in front of shot and a save by McLean. Here's Roberts with a puck. He gets knocked down by Babbage and Rutu takes over. Rutu at center ice from the blue line a shot. Joseph the save. Both teams are changing. 45 seconds to go in the Merzen penalty. Blues lead it 2 0. Holder carries to center ice. Not a Tikkanen on the right wing. He'll fire the puck in around behind the net. Far side, Lume. Shoots it off the boards. Not out. Duchesne keeps it in. Bure intercepts. Can't clear. Duchesne to Hall at the blue line. Hall flips the puck behind the net. Tikkanen and Lume go after it. Lume clears to the corner. And the puck cleared by Watton to center ice. McKinnis to Duchesne. Near side to Hall. He'll work in. Fires the puck behind the Canucks net. McLean leaves it, gets it back as Hull charges in. Feeds into the corner, and Tikkanen is there. Tikkanen trying to get the puck. Can't Russ Cortnall gets it two on two with Bure. Here they come. Bure with a puck over the line behind the back to Russ Cortnall. A shot, and it goes just wide. Blues try to clear the puck out and do. At center ice, Russ Cortnall, a pass for Bure. Chopped away by Duchesne. Canucks back at full strength. McKinnis ahead to Tikkanen over the blue line. Oh, and he fans on a long shot. Puck goes behind the net. Merzen takes down Hull. Hull centers! And the puck tipped away by Russ Kortnall. And out to center ice by Jackson with Merzen. Two on one. Jackson, oh, and a pass tipped away by Holder. And Lidster races to center ice, leading the attack for the Blues with Hull in the air. Canucks come back. Then in the corner, Hedekin takes out Lidster. Hull trying to pry the puck loose from Russ Kortnall. Then it comes loose in the corner, and Russ Kortnall deep in his own zone with a puck. A pass knocked down by Ellick. He'll feed deep. Hedekin gets it. Up the far wing, and the Canucks to center ice. Merzen to Hedekin. Long shot off the stick of Lidster and way up into the crowd behind Curtis Joseph. Brett Hall scores twice in the first period. Now in the second period, it's 2-0 Blues. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. The Canucks had one two-on-one -on -one in the first period. They get another one now. Doug Litster doesn't get the puck or the man. Dane Jackson goes the other way. Now he's on his off wing, doesn't even think about shooting, tries to pass, and a good defensive play by Bill Holder to break it up. Blues in their own end. Norton up to Karamnov. He'll clear the puck out. Babbage races back in his own zone. He's on with Hedekin. Then Ellick and one of the Canuck players get into a match of swinging sticks. It was Oksuda. Then Norton back in his own end. Clears the puck off the boards. Onto the stick of Karamnov with Duchesne. Right wing to Duchesne into the Vancouver end. Flips the puck ahead. Gets it back. Tries to get a shot. Hit by Momesso. And the puck caroms to center ice. Here's Alec with it. Back in his own end to Norton. Gilbert, Karamnov, and Alec on the forward line. Alec gets checked before he reaches the puck. Now it's bouncing at center ice. Picked up by Duchesne. He'll shoot it in, and the Blues and the Canucks are changing. Lume has a pass, take a bad bounce off the boards, but Ronning covers up, and he'll clear to center ice. Now Al McKinnis shoots it in. Blues are offside, but a delayed call, and they put themselves onside. Merzen for Vancouver, ahead for Ojuk too far. The length of the ice, Barron touches the puck, and that is an icing call against Vancouver, trailing here in the second period, two to nothing. If the Blues hold on and win tonight, Game seven will be Friday night at Keel Center. There are seats available. 7.30 the start. Dial ticks 291-7600. And you can purchase tickets at the usual Blues ticket outlets, including the Keel Center box office. 7.30 Friday night, game seven at Keel Center if Rick Lee's team does not win. Now the philosophy of Rick Lee in this series has been shoot, shoot, shoot. Play the man, play hard, and go to the net. Well, they've only had six shots thus far, and I'm sure he cringed when his forwards had a two-on-one break, and knowing that the Blues goaltending has struggled, they decide to pass instead of shooting. Blues set up. McKinnis a drive blocked in front of McLean as Lume ties up taking it. Russ Cortnall to Baranek, left wing for Jeff Cortnall, and the puck ends up off his stick behind the Blues net. McKinnis clears up the boards. Russ Cortnall is checked, but gets the puck. Tries to work in front, does. Backhand shot, save. Rebound on Baranek. 
shoots wide as he was being checked. Here's Jeff Cortnall, and the Canucks are dangerous. He's checked behind the net by McKinnis, still centers, and Joseph clears the puck away. Baranek, a shot hits a leg. Here's Russ Cortnall behind the net, centering, and Joseph the save as Jeff Cortnall trying to take a shot was well covered and really fanned. He had a fine opportunity right in front of Joseph. Now Tikkanen and Baranek are having words. Well, Baranek was in front of the net with Murray Barron, who did a good job on him. And then after the whistle, Al McKinnis took one elbow to the face, and then Jeff Cortnell tried to trip him on the play. But the backhand by Russ Cortnell, Curtis Joseph, a good save, was down, saw it all the way, made a good play, and then had to make the save on the rebound by Joseph Baranek. Couple of tough saves here early, and then as play continued, McKinnis and Corton all come together. Murray Barron, a good job in front of the net on Baranek. As the play continued, the Blues doing a good job coming back around the net to help out Curtis Joseph. Ian LaPerriere with the last offensive play as well. From the faceoff in the Blues, and Watton in the corner battling Anderson. Buck goes along the glass behind the net, far side. Babbage centers, hits the side of the net, may have been knocked away by Joseph. Then Bure checked by Holder in the corner. Right wing circle, Linden a shot, and it hits Lidster. Then Lidster a pass, tipped to center ice by Gilbert. Ojek back in his own end, flips the puck across the ice to Babbage. He advances to the center ice area and backhands it in from the red line. Joseph leaves the puck for Lidster, up the near side for Gilbert. Now Gilbert into the middle of the rink to Holder. He's to the red line. And the Blues shoot the puck in. It comes out to Creighton. Creighton trying to get around. Watton does. Creighton looking to center. Finally puts the puck behind the net. Out of the far corner to Norton. Side of the net to McRae. He's bothered by Babbage. There's some mileage on those two in the corner. Babbage and McRae check the odometer. Now McRae trying to fight off Babbage. Doing an excellent job. McRae on the boards, puck kick loose. Here's Chasse trying to work behind the net, grabbed by Linden. Loose puck, McRae after it. Watton, the rookie, falls down, has the puck under his body, and referee Bill McCreary stops play. Boy, Joe, some excellent work there by Chasse, Carbono, and especially Basil McRae. Well, McRae and Dave Babbage, you mentioned they've been around a long time, both players big and strong. Not that quick, but they really had a battle in the corner and a good job again by the Blues of forechecking. And when they don't have a play, what are they doing? Instead of trying to go to the points or to the high slot, they don't have a play. They're going back behind the net. We've talked about it before. They've scored a few goals in this series from the side of the net. So they keep going back behind the net, keep rotating and trying to get the puck back out in front. Face off in the Canucks end. McRae in the corner. Tries to work behind the net. Lume takes the puck up to Momesso. He's hit by Chasse. Then it's Carbono in front for Chasse, and Ronning steals the puck. Now it comes up to Momesso. He's at center ice. Flips the puck deep into the Blues end. It's Oksuda and Norton. They collide. Oksuda centers by everyone through center ice all the way back into the Vancouver zone. And back to play at your K. Lume. Blues lead 2-0. Second period in a game they must win to stay alive. Up to Ronnie. He'll fire the puck in. It comes in front out of the corner. Joseph leaves it for Barron. Up the far boards. Ronnie intercepts. Hands the puck back to Barron. Up the middle to Karamnov. One man back. Lume. Karamnov waits. Takes a shot. Hits Lume. Goes behind the net. Then Roberts there. Merzen tries to clear. Barron pinches in with Oksuda. They fight in the corner for the puck. Oksuda flips it off the end boards. And on the near side, here's Merzen. He's checked by Roberts, but gets the puck to Ronnie. Ronnie into the blue zone. A pass for Momesso. He's knocked down. May have lost his balance more than anything. Now Barron gets the puck. Flips it around far side. Ronnie to the right point to Babbage. Back to Ronnie. A shot. Joseph the save. Rebound off the end boards. Knocked behind the goal. Here's Oksuda. The Blues have been in a bit of trouble the last two or three shifts. Then Ronnie with a puck. Ronnie in the slot to Hedekin. He backs up to the point. Karamnov goes down. Hedekin in the slot to Ronnie. Ronnie a shot blocked. Ronning another shot and it flips off a stick and over the glass and into the crowd. 11.34 to go, second period. Blues two, the Canucks no score. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey.
after the Game 5 loss in St. Louis, after all the Blues players had showered and dressed, Mike Keenan held a 15-minute meeting just to reconfirm with all his players that they weren't out of the playoffs by any stretch yet or out of this series, and they've come out and they've played strong thus far. Hall scores twice in the first period. Neither team has scored here in the second. Vancouver has come on a bit, ready for a face-off to Curtis Joseph's right. San Jose trying to force a seventh game with Calgary there in the second period in Northern California. San Jose to Calgary two. Toronto at home one in overtime five four over the Blackhawks game seven of that series Friday night at United Center in Chicago. The Blues hoping to force a game seven in this series at Keel Center Friday night. Blues win the draw Lidster with a puck in his own end. Lidster slaps the puck out it'll carry down the ice no icing Hedekin back. Hedekin on defense with Babbage feeds up the center ice. Russ Portnall with brother Jeff and Baranek over the line. Flipping the puck into the near corner along the near board. Jeff Portnall centers. Oh! And a nice play by Holder to knock the puck away from Baranek. And Hall clears the puck out. Babbage at the red line. Coughs it up. Keegan at a partial break. Works in. Shoots. He scores! He scores! S.F. Keegan it Oh, baby, what a big one! And the Blues take Tikkanen coming up big here in game number six. What a goal by Tikkanen anticipating the pass going across the blue line. And Tikkanen, after the Blues worked hard to get it out, Brett Hall getting it out. And then Dave Babbage tries to go across, kind of fans on it. And Tikkanen is able to go to his back end, back to his forehand very quickly. And he was right on top of McLean and able somehow to get the puck up and over the glove being forced to his backhand by Hedekin and then pulls it back on the forehand. McLean went down, which is something we haven't seen much in the series. And Tikkanen with the high shot makes it 3-0. Boy, what a huge goal there. And Creighton pokes the puck into the Vancouver end. Watton plays it ahead. Jackson at the center dot. Jackson over the blue line. To an open right wing, Lume moves in, runs into the Blues player Norton, and the puck kicked into the corner. Here's Jackson trying to center, but he loses the puck to Creighton. Up the near side to Anderson, and he'll clear to center ice. 8.59 of the second period, the time of Tikkanen's goal. He has a goal and two assists. Then Watton gets a high stick from Anderson. He's down. There'll be a penalty. A shot kicked out by Joseph. Jackson centers, and the Blues touch the puck. And the whistle stops, and Watton up will head to the Vancouver bench. He is injured. He seemed to catch a slash or a high stick from Glenn Anderson. It may have been a slash. Well, Watton seems to be holding his, his wrist on the play. It looked initially like he went to grab his face when Anderson got him with the high. It looked like a high stick. Watton went down immediately. Right in center ice, Glenn Anderson... He got the high stick up. Watton did grab his face and go down. But then when he was over by the bench, he looked like he was holding his wrist. He had one glove off and holding his wrist. But on the replay, it clearly showed that he probably caught the high stick up on the side of the head. I'm not sure. High sticking, 941. The time of the penalty to Glenn Anderson. It's the fifth minor called by Bill McCreary. Essatikin, and what a goal. He almost got in the net faster than the puck. Oh. What a play to bring it back to his forehand that quickly and able to get the shot up. He was almost, he had to be right at the top of the crease when he took the shot and to get it almost straight up over the shoulder and just inside the goal. A tremendous goal by Tikkanen. He was saying this morning, he said, maybe I'll go out and score a couple of goals tonight and try and get the game winner if I can. Tikkanen in the first five games, pointless. He and Glenn Anderson criticized for what they haven't done by coach Mike Keenan, but taking an assist on both Hall goals, scores here in the second period. Now the Canucks have the power play. They're 0 for 2 on the power play thus far. Face off near Curtis Joseph. Canucks win the draw near point to Lume, moves to the center of the ice. Now feeds near side to Linden. Linden along the boards, feeds in the corner to Ronnie, back to Trevor Linden on the near board, straight away to Lume, a shot blocked by Carbono. Two on one with Hall. Ahead to Hall. Now Linden back. Puck goes over the line and it's offside. The Blues are offside. 
at the Vancouver Blue Line. 10 one gone in the second period. The Blues have the Canucks right where they want them. A big 3-0 lead in a game the Blues must win to get a seventh game Friday night at home. And Guy Carboneau has played so well killing penalties tonight. Mike Keenan has used him. As soon as there's a Canuck power play, Guy Carboneau has been the player that Mike Keenan has put out there. The Blues dominated in face-offs in that first period, winning 11 face-offs to Vancouver 6, and Carboneau a big part of that. The Blues are short-handed. Anderson off for another 1 minute, 34 seconds. Bure in his own end gives the puck to Lumet. Pass at center ice to Linden, now to Ronning, trying to work in over the line. Checked by Carboneau. Loose puck, Barron slaps it ahead, not out. Bure keeps it in, a pass in front. Intercepted by McKinnis. McKinnis from the red line, a long shot, sails over and wide of the net. Buck bounces to Ronning, and the Blues are changing. Ronning to the red line. Ronning cuts around. Duchesne feeds right wing. Jeff Cortnall chopped down by Tekin and loose puck in the corner. Norton clears it to the line, not out. Lume keeps it in. Right point. This is Pavel Bure. He'll take a shot on the flexion, and Joseph kicks out the right pad. Fine save. Now a battle in the corner. Duchesne knocked down. Ronning has the puck. Trying to get away from Duchesne, he does. Works to the far corner. Leaves the puck. It's Jeff Cortnall centering for Lyndon Worley. Weak shot. And the save. And a puck cleared away by Duchesne. Lume pinches in. Flips the puck in the air. Lyndon gloves it down. Lyndon near the blue line. Far side. It's Bure a drive. What a save. Rebound. They score. Jeff Cortnall on a rebound. A power play goal. And that trims the blue. Three to one. Well, the initial shot from Pavel Bure at the right point. Now we have some action going on at center ice, but Bure took the long shot. Joseph was able to make the save, and then Cortnall was right there. Duchesne was on him, but Cortnall was able to spin. Joseph stayed down on the play, and Cortnall with the wrist shot just over the glove. Bure starts it, head up, sees he's tra there's traffic in front, and then Cortnall just turns, and Joseph stayed down on the ice, and it looked like maybe he was trying to get back up and got caught halfway, and Jeff Cortnall with the quick wrist shot just over the glove inside the post, and that power play goal puts Vancouver on the scoreboard, and the Blues still lead it 3-1. to one. Jeff Cortnall's third. Bure and Linden assisting on the power play goal at 11-14 of the second period. After the goal, when the players were going back to the benches, Tikkanen and Jeff Cortnall had quite a collision, and both went down. Now the faceoff at center ice between Creighton and Baranek. Creighton with Anderson and Gilbert. Baranek with Jeff uh, Russ Cortnall and Jackson. Puck back to Babbage. He clears it out. Gilbert forces it into Creighton. He loses the puck. Jackson right wing to Russ Cortnall. At center ice to Baranek. Now over the line to Jackson. Dane Jackson right point to Hedekin. A shot wide of the net. Springs off the boards. Far side to Russ Cortnall. Important right here. That the Blues keep this crowd down and slow the Canucks up a bit. They've been coming on. Great play. Gilbert to work in. Backhand shot by Anderson. Knocked down. Canucks work the puck up the boards. Creighton dumps it behind the net. It comes from Anderson to Gilbert in front to Creighton. He waits. He shoots. He scores! Oh, baby, what an effort by Creighton. And the line of the three veterans, Gilbert, Anderson, and Creighton, works as hard as you can imagine there. Along the boards, they get the goal and a fabulous second effort by Adam Creighton to make it 4-1. to one. Strength and reach by Creighton. A good job by Gilbert in the corner setting it up. And then Creighton just bites off Babbage and with his reach is able to just reach around, let go a quick wrist shot just inside the far post. And the Blues now lead it 4-1. to one. What an effort. Creighton was being pulled down by Babbage on the play, but his concentration still able to get the shot off, and the Blues lead it 4-1. Boy, great to get that goal back for the Blues. The second of the playoffs for Adam Creighton. And that's what we meant by doing something strong, slowing this crowd down, slowing the Canucks down. At center ice, Hedekin with a puck. His pass misses Jackson. Here's Norton in his own end. He's on defense with Duchesne. Up and open left wing, and Babbage turns with a puck at the Vancouver line. Ahead to Hunter, who tips it in. 
And the play stopped. Puck knocked down by a high stick. Great from Gilbert and Anderson at 11.54. That comes just 40 seconds after Jeff Courtnall's power play goal. 4-1 Blues. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Greg Gilbert and Glenn Anderson did all the work in the corner. And Adam Creighton, the strength, the reach, the effort. He finishes it off, beating McLean to the far side to regain the three-goal lead for the Blues. Ah, uh, the Canucks with a puck in the Blues end. Bure centers, tipped away. Burrs in a shot, blocked by McRae. Loose puck. As McRae works it alone, he fakes, he shoots, he scores! Basil McRae! After Chasse makes a great play at center ice, then behind the play, Chasse gets chopped down and may be hurt, but he made the effort, and McRae scores the goal to make it 5-1, to one, and Chasse is injured. The play started with Vancouver and Merzen. Now we've got some action at center ice as the officials try and break things up. Carbon and Ojic getting together at center ice, and Ojic is going to go to the penalty box. He may have uh, chopped Chasse after he made the play at center ice. We'll have to get a look at it. Well, Chasse did two things. First of all, Merzen had the puck inside the blue zone. He goes to shoot it, and it's blocked by Chasse. And then he races down. You can see McCray coming out of the zone. But what he does is he interferes with Merzen so that McCray can pick up the loose puck. And McCray goes in, fakes. He gets McLean to go down and beats him high on the plane. And Merzen... I believe, and Chasse ended up going down. That's when Chasse got hurt. But what an effort by Chasse. And then Basil McRae, who hasn't scored a goal all season long, gets one to make it 5-1 for the Blues. So the Blues with a four-goal lead in the second period. Now the Canucks are shorthanded. Ojic gets a two-minute penalty to center ice. McInnes firing the puck in. Back to play at Merzen. Whips it around behind the net up the far side to Dane Jackson, and he whacks it the length of the ice. And the play stopped behind the play by referee Bill McCreary, and Ian LaPerriere is going to take a high-sticking penalty. Let's pause here. Five seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Rich Gould. Only on St. Louis 11 News. The player that Ian LaPerriere is talking to or was talking to in the penalty box was Gino Ojic, who got up and was yelling a few things at him. Meanwhile, the play started coming out of the zone. LaPerriere coming back on the play. He takes the penalty, so he goes to the penalty box. And now it's four on four for the next one minute and 35 seconds. And then Vancouver will have a 25-second power play. So 25 seconds after Ojic gets a roughing penalty, LaPerriere takes the high-sticking penalty. Face-off, won by the Blues in their own end. Barron leaves the puck behind the net for McInnes. Up the near side for Hall. He can't get out. Bure knocks the puck onto Russ Courtnall stick. Left point, Hedekin. He'll shoot wide off the end boards and off the net into the corner. Tikkanen gets cross-checked by Bure. Back to the point to Lume. And Tikkanen steals the puck. Feeds it out to Hall. Four on four. This is where the Blues have to be careful over to Tikkanen. And he shoots it wide. Right point, McKinnis slaps the puck into the corner. Played there by Brett Hedekin. He has the puck. Hits Hall on the skate. Then Tikkanen with a puck. Can't control. And here's Hedekin. Pass ahead too far. It's McKinnis to Hall. And Hall plays it back into his own end. Bojic back in 50 seconds. The Blues have a 5-1 lead. Just over six minutes to go in the second period here in Vancouver. Lume at center ice. Plays the puck ahead to Linden. Rink wide for Bure. Cutting into the right wing. He shoots. And Joseph Wastehigh makes the save and holds the puck for a whistle with exactly six minutes to go in period two. Nothing scarier than when you're a defenseman and you've got Pavel Bure coming at you with all kinds of speed. This time he decides to take the shot. Barron goes down to block it, so he has to shoot it over Murray Barron, and Joseph was able to catch that puck in the midsection and hold on to the play. But that, you mentioned it, Kenny, four on four. Vancouver comes out with Russ Courtnall and Pavel Bury, a dangerous situation. Blues win the draw on their own end in half a minute. Vancouver will have a power play. This is Todd Ellick. 
up to center ice. A couple of good moves into the Vancouver end against Cullimore from the corner right to the goal and a weak shot kicked out by McLean. Ronning to center ice. Ronning into the Blues end. Leaves the puck for Linden from the slot. A shot. Oh, what a great save by Curtis Joseph on Trevor Linden. Puck played by Ellick to Norton ahead for Roberts. Dave Roberts through center ice into the Vancouver end. Just dumps the puck in deep. Ojik back on. Vancouver a power play for 18 seconds. Here's Cullimore to the blue line. Now to the red line. Wax the puck in around behind the net. Out the near side. Trevor Linden with a puck. Back to the left point for Jason Cullimore. Along the boards to Linden. Linden in the circle. Right point. Blue man shot. Off Hall stick and over everything into the crowd and then Lidster knocks Ojik down right in front of Joseph with just one second remaining in the high sticking penalty to Ian LaPerriere. And a good job by the Blues again. What they've done so well tonight is they've been quick on the puck, not giving the Vancouver players a lot of time to handle it and take the shots. Even that time with Lume walking in from the top of the circle, Brett Hall quickly over to him. He's able to get his stick down on the ice and block the shot by Lume and, de and deflect it up and over the glass. Brett Hall scored twice in the first period, then Tekin in here in the second, a power play goal for Jeff Court and all of the Canucks. But Adam Creighton and Basil McRae have come back to score. They scored a goal with in a span of less than 60 seconds each of them. Those two goals really making a huge difference to build the lead to 5-1. Now, Ken, we talked about Brendan Shanahan irreplaceable. The Blues have had some help with Brendan Shanahan being out of the lineup, getting a good effort from some of the other players that haven't contributed much yet. Blues a long pass for Tekin and too far the length of the ice. Hedekin touches the puck. Icing against the Blues. Both teams now are at full strength. 447 left in the second period. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Curtis Joseph makes his best save of the game. A little drop pass from Ronning to Trevor Linden, who walks in, has all kinds of time, lets a quick shot go. And Joseph with a beautiful save on Linden with the blocker. Blues five, Canucks one. The Blues attempting to force game seven Friday night in St. Louis. San Jose has taken a 3-2 lead at home over the Flames in the second. Here's Russ Cordell from the faceoff shooting wide. Left point, Hedekin shoots the puck behind the net. Creighton takes over, loses the puck. Then it's played by McKinnis up for Anderson. He can't get out. Hedekin moves it ahead. And Barron clears the zone to Gilbert. He moves around Lume, but then Baranek back to steal the puck. Up to Jeff Cortnall. He's at center ice. Checked by Anderson. And McKinnis in his own end. Near side for Anderson. He flips the puck across the ice. Lume leaves it for Baranek. He gets checked by Gilbert right at the Vancouver blue line. Gilbert goes down, has the puck under his leg, and play is stopped against San Jose late in the second in Northern California leading Calgary three to two trying to send that series back to Calgary for game seven on Friday night already tonight Toronto in overtime at home beating Chicago five four forcing game seven in Chicago on Friday evening. Greg Gilbert saying this morning this is identical to the Ranger team last year going into game six against New Jersey. I said, well, what did you decide to do going into that game? And he said, we just talked about playing a good, solid 60 minutes, everybody putting in the effort. Thus far, they've done the same thing here tonight. 4-13 left. Second period. Vancouver now with the same number of shots as the Blues, 16 aside. Blues outshot him 10-5 in the first period. Duchesne just misses the mark from center ice. McRae slaps the puck behind the Canucks net. This is Jason Cullimore, the lanky defenseman, trying to get around Carboneau. Feeds the puck ahead, and Norton at his own zone has the puck. He gets checked. Puck loose at the blue line. Bure moves in, shoots. Oh, a glove save! And an acrobatic save at that by Curtis Joseph to Rob Pavel Bure from the left wing. And North will get a penalty on the play, but keeping the puck in with Bure, and he really has time, lets it go, a rolling puck, and Curtis Joseph makes a tremendous glove hand save on Bure. Even more difficult that the puck was on edge and rolling, and Joseph able to just come out of the net, has good position, and acrobatic, you're right, comes up with a terrific save on Bure, but Vancouver will go on the power play with Norton going off. 
The penalty coming with 349 remaining. Norton detected holding a stick. And the faceoff near Joseph, won by the Canucks, near point Lume. Over to the far point to Bure. Up front, Linden, Jeff Courtnall and running a shot, knocked down in front. Carbono gets the puck. And he'll backhand at the length of the ice. The Canucks are one for four on the power play. Again, Norton goes off at 16-11. Here's Vancouver, their only goal on the power play. Right wing Ronnie moves into the slot, takes a shot, blocked by McInnes, and he'll wind up and fire the puck the length of the ice. Lume will go back as the Blues are changing. Now killing the penalty, Tikkanen and Ellick. McKinnis and Barron who gets the puck up to Alec moving in on the right wing. He'll take a shot. He scores from the right wing dot. Alec upstairs to beat McLean and it is 6-1 St. Louis. And Al McKinnis with the defensive play at his own blue line. The long pass comes up, but McKinnis comes right up right away and takes Jeff Cortnall out of the play. That allows Barron to pick it up. And Todd Ellick just uses a defenseman. Lume as the screen, takes a long shot. McLean looked like he had trouble picking it up. And Ellick with the quick shot, shorthanded, over the right shoulder of McLean. And the Blues lead it 6-1. to one. Todd Ellick didn't play a lot late in the regular season, but he scored four goals in this playoff series. Here's Holder in his own end up to Ellick. The Blues are shorthanded. That's right, the Blues score a shorthanded goal, and Ellick shoots it in. Barron gets an assist. They say Ellick the goal at 16.53. Now Bure through center ice. Moves in, shoots, he scores! Pavel Bure goes upstairs. And the Canucks have their second power play goal. And the Blues' lead is 6-2. to two. Now Steve Duchesne was left alone on Pavel Bure. And when, again, I mentioned it earlier, when you have that kind uh, when Burry has that kind of time, he can do some magic, and he gives Duchesne a little bit of a stutter step, gets Duchesne to think he's going to the inside, but instead stays to the outside, and the quick wrist shot. Little fake to the inside, back to the outside, the quick wrist shot, and right over the right shoulder of Curtis Joseph, and it's now 6-2 Blues. Now both teams at full strength, face off at center ice. Barron has the puck. He'll backhand it in from the red line. Dashing back to play at Hedekin. He's on defense with Babbage. Up front, Linden, Jeff Courtnall, and Momesso. Babbage, a feet ahead for Jeff Courtnall. Too far the length of the ice. No icing. Back to play the puck. Joseph behind the net. Clears it. Knocked down by Momesso. And then the Blues. Anderson clears it down the ice. It'll go over the end red line. Hedekin back. There's a whistle. And it is an icing call against the Blues. Ellick scores at 16.53. A shorthanded goal. Then Bure, a power play goal from Lume at 17.19. Bure's fifth goal of the series. Hall with two tonight has five goals for the Blues. Oh, Pavel Bure, what a player. He just fired it. Joseph got a little piece of it off the right arm, but he was going down, and it just catches the upper portion of the net. And Pavel Burry now has points in all six playoff games. Six goals, five assists, 11 points in the six games. You talk about a player raising the level of their play from the regular season to the playoffs. Boy, Burry has been something. He was just so-so during the regular season. Face off to Curtis Joseph's left, Linden and Carbono, And I believe they'll wave out Guy Carbono. And now Linden trying to get the draw straight back to Pavel Bure, who was just behind him. The defenseman, Dave Babich, moved up on the boards. And McRae wins the draw. Puck in the corner. Here's Babich with it. Behind the net for Jeff Cortnall. He centers. And Bill Holder takes over, getting it in front of Linden. And he'll backhand it ahead. Not out. Kept in by Bure. Passing it to the far side. Babich works in. Boy, the Canucks are fired up now. Carbono clears up the near boards. Here's Chasse, can't get out. Hedekin over to Jeff Cortnall in front for Bure, and the puck bounces to Joseph. He scoops it up and holds on with 1.44 remaining in the second period, and the Blues on top, 6-2.
Have you visited the home of the world's largest brewer lately? Anheuser-Busch offers free tours of the brewery, including the home of the world-famous Budweiser Clydesdales. For tour information, call 314-577-2626. Vancouver had just five shots on Curtis Joseph in the first period. Now with 144 to go in the second, they have 14 in the period, 19 on the evening. The Blues have had seven shots on goal in this period. Blues Hall can't clear. Merzen intercepts behind the net side of the goal. Oksuda goes to the corner. Oksuda trying to spin away from LaPerriere. Works behind the net. Puck poked away by LaPerriere. Here's Tekin in on a line with Hull and LaPerriere just dumping it out. Lou May loses the puck. Hull shoots it in. Wide of the net. Back to play at Big Dana Merzen. Merzen across the ice in his own zone to Lou May. Ahead for Ronnie. At center ice to Oksuda. Then a pass for Momesso by him. At center ice. Puck gets away. Hull has it. He tries to work in. Does. Can't get around Lou May. And we're down to a minute two to go in the second period. Roman Oksuda in his own end. Now the Canucks led by Merzen to center ice. He fires the puck in wide of the goal. Along the boards, Duchesne. LaPerriere is down on the ice. Hall at center ice. Back in his own end to Norton. Now LaPerriere gets up. Trying to get a penalty on the Canucks side. He doesn't. And LaPerriere shoots the puck in. Goes to the bench. 33 seconds to go in the period. Blues lead 6-2. Canucks misfire at center ice. Barron shoots the puck in. Back to play it is Hedekin. Up the far boards to Russ Courtnall. Ahead to Ronnie. He's at the red line. He'll shoot the puck in. Ojek after it. Side of the net. Joseph plays it. Wheels it around far side for Ellick. He gets hit by Russ Courtnall. Then Baranek comes in. Has the puck. Tries to work in front. Gets checked. Loose puck. Ojek Wade shoots. Hits the post. Oh! And Joseph has the puck covered. Then Baranek in a shoving match in front of the Blues net. Then Ojek comes in. Oh, the Blues get a break there with three seconds remaining in the second period. Gino Ojek had a wide open net and hits the post. The Canucks have come on and it's been led by their four checking. Baranek tries to get in front. No one picks up Ojek and he has the whole net. With Joseph down, the whole net, it seemed to fan a little bit on the shot. The puck was wobbling as it came off his stick, and he just simply hits the right post. He was all alone, and he had Curtis Joseph right where he wanted him, flat on the ice, and the whole net to shoot at. Looked to fan a little bit, hits the right post, and then Joseph was able to cover up. Now they'll bring McLean to the bench for an extra attacker, the face-off to the left of the St. Louis goal with three seconds remaining in a busy second period. We have had six goals in the period. It'll be Carbono facing off with Ronnie. Blues lead 6-2. The Canucks again with two power play goals tonight. They have nine in these six games in this series. Now Carbono a bit aggressive and they haven't dropped the puck yet. And the Vancouver team showing that they can strike very quickly. When you have Bure and Court and all those types of players, you can score in a hurry. They drop the puck, and it comes to center ice from the faceoff, and that'll do it. That is the end of period two. So the Blues in the second period get goals from Tikkanen, Creighton, McRae, and Ellick. Jeff Cortnall and Pavel Bure power play goals for Vancouver. 6-2 Blues after 40 minutes here in Game 6. Coming up in this intermission, Bruce Affleck will have as his guest Blues president Jack Quinn. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Coliseum where the Blues carry a 6-2 lead into the third period. Let's take a look at our Blues playoff leaders Brendan Shanahan out with a broken ankle has nine points. Brett Hall five goals in six games six points. Todd Ellick with six points. McKinnis and Chasse with five. Duchesne with four. Our Blues leaders brought to you by the AutoZone. The best parts in auto parts. And we have a new goaltender in for the Vancouver Canucks. Kay Whitmore replaces Kirk McLean for this third period. Which is underway, and Russ Courtnall can't get around LaPerriere at center ice. LaPerriere slides the puck to Whitmore, who leaves it for Lume. On defense with Merzen, ahead to Russ Courtnall. 
on a line with brother Jeff and Baranek. A pass knocked down by McKinnis, who's knocked out. Baranek carries into Russ Courton all on the far wing in front of Baranek. A shot block. Blues can't clear. Burns of a drive. It hits Joseph and deflects into the crowd. May have hit him in the head. I'm not sure. Then in front, Tikkanen having words with Jeff Courtnall. Well, there was no question that he had trouble seeing the puck because there was a crowd in front of him. He was just able to get his hands in front of him and deflect it up and over the net and the glass and get a whistle in his own zone. But Joseph, with all the traffic in front of him, that's one thing that Vancouver has tried to continue to do in this series is prevent him from seeing the puck. He was able to pick it up just at the last minute and make the save. Russ Courtnall has had an excellent series for Vancouver. He's number nine. He's at the top of the circle. Face off. Puck comes back and all the way out to center ice. And the Canucks control now in their own end. They trail at 6-2. Up to Jeff Courtnall. His pass intercepted. Norton shoots the puck in. It's Creighton, Gilbert, and Anderson on for the Blues. They forecheck. Anderson and Gilbert. Gilbert in front. And a pass over for Duchesne. Knocked away. And the Canucks deep in their own zone. A pass for Jeff Courtnall ahead for Merzen. And Russ Courtnall headed to the bench. And Gilbert shoots the puck in. Both teams are changing. Here's Merzen ahead. Too far on the left wing by everyone. And the puck goes right to Joseph. And he'll clear it up the near side. Too far for Roberts. Here's Dave Babich ahead to Oja. He can't work in. Then Holder ahead to Roberts. He'll shoot the puck deep into the Vancouver end. Whitmore out of the net. Slams it up the boards. Roberts gets the puck. A pass behind the net for Ellick. Knocked away. And here's Bure. Bure at center ice. Left wing for. And a shot right on. And a save by Joseph. Ojik taking the shot. Then he and Lidster doing some bumping and shoving. Gino Ojek cutting in. And Joseph able to make the save. After the shot by Gino Ojek breaking down the left wing, as he went around the net, he really gave Doug Litzer a cross check right to the chest area or the throat or chin. And Litzer right away looking for a call. There was no call, and that's what kept them together. But on the play, Vancouver is able to get out of their own zone. They'll make a long pass. Now, Gino Ojek going down the left wing that Litzer is on him. He gets one shot, and as they continue, Boy, Ojek just turned and got the stick up into the face of Doug Lidster. And they continued their conversation out to the neutral zone. This could be a long third period. 6-2 is a comfortable lead, but the way this series has gone, nothing is very comfortable. Chasse shoots the puck out. Has there been any momentum in this series as of yet? I mean, None. neither team has been able to establish that. Yet they'll come out, one team will play well, then the other one won't play well, and it's been a back and forth series. Now the Blues four check and Carbono trying to pass the puck, shoots it over the glass and out of play. This Vancouver team is so explosive that they were to get a power play or two, get things going, get Joseph uh, a little edgy. You could see Vancouver picking up three or four goals in a short period of time. Not that we hope it happens, but uh, I like to think the game is over, but I'm not uh, quite ready to concede anything here. Too, too many crazy things have happened in this series. We thought this was going to be a goaltending duel in this series. It simply hasn't turned out to be that. No one thought it was going to be high scoring, and it's been a high scoring series. Okay, Whitmore in goal for Vancouver. Canucks have trouble, lose the puck. LaPerriere to Hall. Shot goes wide. Here's Ronning clearing the puck out. It'll slide deep into the St. Louis end. Hall goes back to play it, and an icing call against Vancouver. This is the first time the Blues and the Canucks have ever met in the Stanley Cup playoffs, and it has been a very, very unusual series that looks like it'll go to a Game 7 Friday night in St. Louis. If it does, game time, 7.30, there are seats available. You can call Dial Ticks at 291-7600. You can purchase tickets at the usual Blues ticket outlets. If the Blues can hold on and win it, they've got 17.49 to go, and they lead 6-2 from the faceoff at the side of the net. Whitmore falls on the puck, and we'll have another faceoff 
deep in the Vancouver end. And what the Blues have done to start this period, any play in the neutral zone, they're not taking a chance, they're dumping it in. That might seem conservative, but the more that the Vancouver defense has to go back and make plays in their own zone, the more time is going to tick off the clock. At center ice, Oksuda to Momesso, over the line, slides the puck behind the net. Cullimore, the defenseman trying to center, does! Oh, Oksuda stopped by Joseph. Creighton can't clear, running a shot, and it deflects wide. Here is Gilbert trying to get the puck out, can't. Then Creighton tries to get it out. Finally, Anderson does to Creighton. He gets to the red line and shoots the puck in, and now the Blues are changing. They lead 6-2. to two. Canucks to center ice, Ronnie. Wheels gives the puck to Lume. He's played a lot again tonight. He can't get a shot, and the puck goes into the corner. Played by Elick up to Roberts. He'll clear the zone. Elick, Roberts, and Karamnov. Lume, a pass for Hedekin. He has trouble with the puck, goes down, but Lume covers up, sends the puck high in the air, bounds down at the Blues' defense to McInnes. He hits the linesman with it. Here's Elick with the puck. He gets to the red line and shoots it in. Then Whitmore clears it around. Out center ice, Karamnov and Hedekin going at each other. Then Hedekin slams Karamnov from behind. Oh, Karamnov, a nice right to the midsection from in close. I didn't know it. He's a good in close body puncher. <laughs> <laughs> they were both going to get called for minor penalties, and then Hedekin continued the action. 16.40 to go in the third. 6 2 Blues. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Ex teammates Fred Hedekin and the Big B, Vitaly Karamnov, get together at the boards in front of the penalty boxes. Hedekin with a little. Glove to the face, Karamnov retaliates. Boy, he doesn't back down at all, does he? And as they get together, he was able to get one last punch in. They both go off. Roughing penalties at 3.20 of the third period, four on four. This is something the Blues don't like. This is not a good situation. But leading by four is a pretty nice situation. Blues barren in his own end. On with McKinnis, Hall, and Tikkanen. At center ice, Babbage takes over for Vancouver. His pass misfires. Here's McKinnis, left wing for Tikkanen into the Vancouver zone. Drop pass. Barron shoots wide. Then Hall failing to center from behind the net. Babbage advances the puck to Russ Courtnall. At center ice to Jeff Courtnall. Moving in on McKinnis. Tikkanen back. Then Hall tries to get the puck. Can't. Here's Cullimore leaving it. Jeff Courtnall, a shot wide from the right wing. Over on the far side, here's Russ Courtnall. He'll dance around a check, takes a backhand shot over the crossbar. At the right point, Dave Babbage, his pass. Oh, going for Russ Courtnall, who might have been able to move in alone. Hull dump, Russ Courtnall tries to get around McKinnis. Can't from the blue line. Babbage, a shot that hits Jeff Courtnall. And the Canucks are dangerous. Barron will take a penalty. He grabs on to Jeff Courtnall in the four on four situation. Very difficult for the Blues. Now they'll be two men short while the Canucks are one man down. Murray Barron behind the net ends up going off. Now I believe Jeff Courtnall, I believe, is going to go off also along with Essa Tikkanen. They came together, but behind the net, Barron takes down Courtnall. And Vancouver with an opportunity here. Still 15 38 to go in this game. We talked about the dangerous Vancouver scores. They'll have a four on three. This will be a real test now for Curtis Joseph. The clock with 15 minutes, 38 seconds showing. And for the Blues, it can't tick away fast enough. In the blue zone, the Blues trying to clear. Brett Hall going after the puck. He gets pulled down by Russ Courtnall. And there's no call on that, and Vancouver is able to regain control of the puck, keep it in the zone, and then that led to the Barron penalty. The next 58 seconds, Vancouver will have a four on three, and then they'll have the power play. Now they take it off the clock, and Tikkanen is the one they give the extra two minutes to, so they will have a four on three for the next 58 seconds. Jure tips the puck to the blue line to Lume. Linden's in front. Far corner to Russ Courtnall. Back to the blue line to Lume. Right wing side to Bure. He shoots, and the shot to flex wide. Bure straight away at the blue line to Lume. Far side, Russ Courtnall. Now back to Lume. Right wing, Bure, a shot, save, rebound! 
Linden tied up. Carbono clears the puck. Not out. Lume near side to Bure. Oh, was that a close call? Blues lead 6 2. Near corner to Russ Courtnall. Four on three. Behind the net, Russ Courtnall banks the puck out to the blue line to Lume. Right wing circle. Bure. He shoots. It's blocked by Norton. He can't get the puck. Lume. Right wing side to Bure again. Straight away to Lume. Over to Russ Courtnall. A one timer wide. Five seconds to go in the original penalties. Hedekin and Karamnov. Bure at the blue line. Far point to Lume. Now the Blues are down a man. Less than a minute to go in the Tekin and penalty. The Canucks are at full strength. In front, Oksuda. He shoots wide. Norton can't clear. Bure out of the corner along the boards. Checked by Norton and Karamnov. Gets the puck and clears at the length of the ice. Bure acting as though he got slashed by Norton. He did. 38 seconds to go in the Tekin and penalty. Blues lead 6-2. Vancouver is two for five tonight on the power play. Ronnie at center ice shoots the puck into the corner. Holder back, slaps it off the glass and off Ronnie to center ice. Sent back in and the Blues clear it out. McKinnis up the right wing to Ellick. Blues are shorthanded. Ellick works back to center ice, feeds the puck to Holder in the Blues territory. Now over to McKinnis and he'll slam it the length of the ice and taken in back in nine seconds. Taken in and Courtnall getting those unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. Now taken in returns, and the Blues are at full strength. Working in. Varani kind of feed from Oksuda. Backhand shot and a stick save by Joseph. The puck ends up behind the Blues net. Adam Creighton, who has a goal tonight, a long pass tipped off Hedekin to Tekin in. He's poke check. Now McKinnis at his own line, far wing to Creighton. And he'll just backhand the puck in. Coming up to the seven minute mark. Anderson steals behind the net, tries to center, hits the back of the goal. Cullimore ahead to Rutu at his own line. Far wing for Tim Hunter over the St. Louis line, flips the puck into the corner. Holder back to get it. Clears it to center ice and Murs in there for Vancouver. Sending it across to the near side and back to play it. Dave Babbage, he goes behind his net. Far wing off the boards to center ice and it's Dane Jackson. Into the blue zone, he's poke checked, and Todd Ellick gets the puck, leads the rush the other way. Up to the red line, shoots the puck in. And then Mers and Ellick come together, and play is stopped. Now Jackson goes after Ellick, and the linesman is escorting Ellick over to the penalty box. The Blues lead at 6-2, 12-37. Remaining in the third period here in game six, this is St. Louis Blues hockey. The Blues, Todd Ellick goes off. Two minutes for slashing. Dana Merzen also goes off for the Vancouver Canucks for roughing. So another four-on-four four situation for the Blues in Vancouver. 7.23, the time of the penalties here in the third period. The Blues have a 6-2 lead. If they win, game seven is Friday night in St. Louis. If the Canucks come back and win, the Blues are done. Blues win the draw, left point, Norton a shot, Whitmore the save. Kirk McLean played the first two periods. Babbage to center ice to Russ Gordon, all to Bure. He'll take a shot, and it goes off to Shane Stick just wide. Blues in their own end, look out. Boy, Norton almost gets crunched by Bure, but clears the puck out. Now Norton gets slugged by Russ Courtnall. Norton trying to get away. Russ Courtnall with three good shots. Now Norton gets his gloves off, and he's ready to hammer the little fella, Russ Courtnall. But Russ Courtnall goes down. Norton didn't want to fight. Russ Courtnall left him no choice. And the linesman trying to separate Jeff Norton and Russ Courtnall. Well, the original call should have been on Cabo Burry for going after Norton on the sideboards. Boy, he had his stick up and missed him. I believe he missed him before Russ Courtnell jumped in. All right, somebody has been cut, and it looks like Russ Courtnell. Well, on the play, on the play, Norton was coming around the net, and Bure was coming into forecheck on the play. Norton behind the net, moves it up. Courtnell's there first. Now here's Norton right here. And Bure really takes a run at him. Norton ducks out of the way. And then he takes an elbow from Courtnell. And then as they got together, 
Courtnell dropped his gloves and started punching away before Norton was able to do anything. He was finally able to get his hands free, but by that time, he had already absorbed three or four punches from Russ Courtnell. And I believe Jeff Norton was cut, and I don't know where. It could have been back on the Bure, uh, Bure hit. It could have been on the elbow from Russ Courtnell, but he's been cut. Well, Courtnell started punching away before Jeff Norton had his gloves off, and finally Norton dropped him his gloves and was able to get his left hand free. Took a couple of swings, didn't connect on Courtnell. But this is one of those situations with 12-13 to go and getting ready for game seven. We could see a lot of these types of incidents here in the third period, and referee Bill McCreary's got to try and keep things under control. Toronto tonight won 5-4 at home in overtime over Chicago. They'll play game seven Friday night at United Center. In the third period at San Jose, the Sharks lead the Calgary Flames 5-2. The Sharks seem destined to force a game seven in Calgary on Friday night as the Blues leading here in Vancouver 6-2 seem destined to do with the Canucks force a game seven at Keel Center in St. Louis on Friday night. Well, if there was a catalyst on this team or a couple of catalysts for the Blues coming into this game and they needed to have a good start, how about the effort Essa Tikkanen has had tonight in his performance? Assisted on the first two goals of the game, both scored by another catalyst, Brett Hull, who got things going, and then Tikkanen with the third goal of the game to give the Blues a 3-0 lead. Boy, he has responded to the criticism that Mike Keenan gave him publicly, and he's come out and just played a tremendous game thus far. Russ Courtnall is going to pick up a two-minute minor here. Both teams were a man short. Now the Canucks will be two men short. Again, the Blues lead it 6-2. to two. There's 12-13 remaining in the third period. Curtis Joseph tonight has been certainly much stronger than he was in game five in St. Louis and seemed to grow with his confidence in this game when the Blues jumped to a 2-0 lead in the first period on two Hall goals and scored early in the second Essa Tikkanen to make it three to nothing. And Kirk McLean certainly did not have a strong game for the Vancouver Canucks pulled after allowing six goals in two periods. Russ Courtnall gets two minutes for instigating a fight five for fighting in a game misconduct. Jeff Norton gets five for fighting. Dana Merzen gets a 10 minute misconduct here at 747 of the third period. And they're trying to get things straight on the penalty clock at center ice. And we talked at the beginning of the game, Ken, about how the Blues had to come out and not get into one of those run and shoot type games, not give up any odd man rushes. They've only given up two in this game thus far. So they played very well defensively. They kept Vancouver off balance at the start. And with their four checking, that led to some some early goals to give them the lead. The Blues to use Mike Keenan's term have not been risk taking here tonight. Now McKinnis to Hall up to the red line. Blues have a power play four on three. Hall works in far corner as Duchesne at the right point gives him the puck near point for McKinnis a very sharp pass off his skate and out to center ice. Here's McKinnis in the center circle near wing to Hall. He golfs the puck around behind the net out to the far point to Duchesne. Ahead for Tikkanen, now to McKinnis at the blue line. Left wing for Hall. Blues lead 6-2. Hall back to McKinnis, back to Hall. He fakes a shot, now to McKinnis. He'll shoot. He scores! Tikkanen! Deflection, and then he gets drilled after the puck was well in the net by Brad Hedekin. But a sensational deflection by Essa Tikkanen. A power play goal to make it 7-2. And Brett Hall started with the puck on the side. He faked the slap shot, got everyone to move to him, and then he put it back to Tikkanen, or I should say to McGinnis, the perfect shot. And Tikkanen right there to deflect it in as Brett Hedekin came in late to take Tikkanen out of the play. The big shot by McGinnis, but he knew where he was shooting. Right to Tikkanen, who was parked there. He deflected it in, and Hedekin kept coming. 
and knocked Tekin in down. Hedekin went down as well, but that's a power play goal for the Blues, and they have a very comfortable 7-2 lead. 11.26 to go in the third period, and I am now beginning to sit back in my chair a little bit. A little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. Take it in from McInnes and Hall. Power play goal at 8.54. The first goal here in the third period. Now the two teams playing for a side. Blues clear the puck out of their own end. Lume skates back to pick it up at his own zone. Over to Cullimore. At center ice, a pass by Bure and Holder. And here's Carboneau in his own zone. Over to Lidster. Lidster, Holder, Carboneau. And LaPerriere. Lidster at center ice to Holder. He'll blast her in right on a save made by Whitmore. And LaPerriere with a puck. He'll shoot off Lume Y. Here's Pavel Bure with a puck. Under 11 minutes to go in game six. Bure loses the puck, but there'll be a penalty call. And I believe it'll be on Carboneau. Now the Canucks surround LaPerriere. And the Blues are going to be short a man here with nine seconds remaining in the original penalties to Ellick and Merzen. Carboneau doesn't like it but Burry had it tried to stop and go the other way. Carboneau was there and his right skate comes together with the feet of Pavel Burry. The puck drops loose as Burry went down and Ian LaPerriere was there to take the shot which went in the net. He got a little slash from the goaltender, Kay Whitmore, as he went by. And then the rest of the Canucks converged on LaPerriere, but the play was whistled down. Carboneau goes off. A four-on-three now for the next nine seconds. And then Vancouver will have a five-on-four for a minute and 51 seconds. 10.46 to go in this third period. Now the officials are over talking to Mike Keenan. One of the linesmen has gotten the attention of one of the security guards here at the Pacific Coliseum behind the Blues bench. And I'm not exactly sure what the discussion is about. I believe they're having a problem with some fans behind the Blues bench. They've got enough security people there now to take care of just about anything. Let's pause here. Five seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. The Blues seventh goal by Essa Tekin in his second of the game. The long shot by Al McKinnis right on the stick. The perfect deflection by Tekin gets past Whitmore. That goal made it 7-2. to two. two goals and two assists tonight for Essa Tekin. Carbon 2 for tripping at 9-14. Here come the Canucks. Bure over the line. Now the Canucks... And the Blues each get a man back, and the Blues are shorthanded. Ronning in his own end, gives the puck to Lume, back to Ronning, up to the blue line, ahead now for Bure. He carries into the blue zone, stops inside the line. A pass to Lume. He advances along the right wing boards, leaves it in the corner for Ronning. He has the puck. Ronning feeds to the blue line to Lume. Over left wing circle, Babich in front. And the pass tipped away by McKinnis. Here's a shot knocked down in the slot by McKinnis. Babbage a drive off McKinnis. Now Linden in the corner, bumped by McKinnis. Ellick gets the puck and clears it out. A minute 10 to go in this Vancouver power play. They're two for six. Ronning shoots the puck in. Joseph behind the net has it. Clears it off the glass near side, out to the right point. Yurke Lume into the corner to Ronning. Ronning along the near boards to Bure. Out to the blue line to Lume, far side to Babich, across, right wing circle, Bure, and he shoots wide. McKinnis, a good job tying up Linden. Then Linden, can't control in the corner, here's Ronning, far boards for Linden. Left point, Babich, a shot, tipped away by McKinnis, and Barron shoots the puck the length of the ice. The Blues lead it 7-2. Hall has scored twice, so has Tikkanen. Now Momesso whips the puck in. Joseph can't stop it behind the net. Far side, Duchesne gets in Jeff Courtnall's way. Then Holder behind the net. Checked by Momesso. Momesso centers and Tikkanen takes the puck and shoots at the length of the ice. 7-2 Blues, nine minutes to go in game six. Carboneau with 10 seconds remaining in his penalty. Heddick into center ice. Then Gilbert gets in the way. And the Canucks take over again. Hedekin a pass too far for Momesso. And the puck ends up behind the St. Louis net. Cleared by Joseph. 
Up the near side for Chasse, and the Blues at full strength. They head to Carbono. He shoots, he scores! Guy Carbono coming out of the penalty box. Takes a pass, cutting it on the right wing. As Cullimore was bearing down, Guy Carbono beats Kay Whitmore, and it is 8-2 St. Louis. What a night for Guy Carbono. What a pass from Denny Chasse, cross ice all the way, and Carbono with the quick release just snapped the wrist shot as Whitmore was going down the puck over his outstretched glove. But the quickness with which Carbono gets the shot off, Whitmore on his way down and just fires it right over the glove and into the net to make it 8-2 for the Blues. 11-24, the time of Carbono's first playoff goal from Chasse. Now look from the goal cam behind Kay Whitmore. You could see him just going down at the time and the quick release by Guy Carbono beats him. Now the Blues take the puck. Alec to McRae. He'll fire it in. Well, the Blues now are humiliating the Canucks here on their home ice. Rutu dumps the puck in. Joseph the save, and he gives the puck to Holder. Here's Bill Holder. He'll just flip the puck over the glass and into the crowd. That'll stop play. 8.16 to go in the third period. And this is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Here in Vancouver, Tim Hunter creating some havoc for Vancouver. But the Blues have created the big story. They lead 8-2, 8-16 to go in the third period. And a lot of this crowd is headed home. 16,015 tonight at the Pacific Coliseum, 135 short of a sellout. And if the Canucks are not able to win Friday night in St. Louis, this game will be the last NHL game played here in this facility. They have a brand new building that'll be ready in the fall downtown across the street from BC Place, their big indoor stadium. Puck goes behind the Blues net. Ojek in the corner to Bure. Bure comes to the right wing, circle and a pass off Creighton Skate, and the puck deflects to center ice. Eight minutes to go, game six. A game the Blues must win, and they lead 8-2. to two. Now Anderson in front, waits, fakes, pad save, rebound. Oh, and Whitmore has it under his body. Anderson pokes at the puck, and now a brawl breaks out. A brawl right next to the Vancouver net, as the Canucks did not like. The oh, Ojek. Ojek. A big hit on Holder, and Ojek is loose. Look out. Ojek is loose. Who wants him? It's Adam Creighton. Oh, baby, here we go in the corner. The Canucks did not like Glenn Anderson poking at the puck under the body of Kay Whitmore. They want blood here at the Pacific Coliseum. Ojek and Creighton. Ojek, one of the toughest in the NHL. Everybody paired off. There's still a pile up at the side of the net. Now Ojek and Creighton come together. Creighton gets Ojek's sweater over his head. And Creighton ties up Ojek. Now they get Anderson off the bottom of the pile. He had been attacked. Now Ojek with his sweater, his undershirt, and his equipment ripped off, grabs onto Creighton, has Creighton's sweater over his head. Now Ojek wants to get Anderson. Ojek is naked, waist up. Creighton wants Ojek. Ojek ought to be suspended from here until a couple of years from now. He has incited the crowd, and Gino Ojek gives up. Now Lume and Creighton trying to get at each other. We have sticks and gloves and helmets everywhere, and they finally get Creighton into the penalty box. All of this with 7.50 to go in the third period, and the Blues have made a rout of this one. They lead it 8-2. to two. Well, we warned him of a long period, didn't we? You could see this coming, and Anderson is cut on the nose or above the eye, and that was a play where Anderson thought the puck was there, and it was actually Trevor Linden that almost knocked it into his own net, and then when Anderson went after the puck, Linden jumped on him, and everyone converged to the left of the net. The real story of the game is the Blues have answered the challenge. They lead the Canucks 8-2, to two, and there will be a Game 7 Friday night at Gill Center in 
St. Louis. We'll take a timeout. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Well, this is what happened on the play. Anderson in front, and then he attracts a crowd. Gino Ojek, Trevor Linden. Now Holder is with Ojek, and Holder ends up on his knees. That's a bad place to be, and watch the right hand of Gino Ojek. A punch that catches Holder in the mouth. Then he tries to go back after Ojek. Ojek is looking for anybody. Takes another swipe at Bill Holder, and then finally Adam Creighton jumps into the play. Then they dance for a while. Both Ojek and Creighton will end up behind the net. And Ojek at this point has lost his mind. Ojek went absolutely crazy. I mean, he lost it. Wow. Totally. He was running around trying to get anybody. Finally, Creighton, who is big and strong, is able to hold him for a second. Now, Ojik is one of these players, doesn't tie down his sweater, and his shoulder pads come off easily, and that really allows him some freedom, as then Adam Creighton find him, finds himself in a difficult position. He does a smart thing, stays down, but Ojik tries to break his ribs with a couple of punches before the line's been finally jumped in. And then Ojik wasn't finished. He yeah. got up, he kept looking around for somebody else. Yeah, he went after Anderson then. And Anderson was kind of baiting him and just kind of skating backwards. Is there this Ojek going crazy or what? He has lost his mind. Now Anderson's got a little bit of a smile just kind of circling around backwards. Look at him. He's still looking for somebody. Wow. So there will be penalties galore here. We can tell you again there's 7.50 to go. In the third period, the Blues lead 8-2. They have tied a team record for goals in a single playoff game. Back on April 11th, 1982, the Blues won a playoff game against the Winnipeg Jets 8-2. They have equaled that record. Eight goals by a Blues team in a single playoff game. Now let's turn to our scoring recap. Hall scores twice in the first period. Then Tikkanen makes it 3-0. The Jeff Courtenall power play goal. But the Blues come back quickly with three goals from Creighton, McRae, and Ellick to really put it out of reach. Bure gets a power play goal. And McRae also scores in the period number two. Now in the third period, Tikkanen has a power play goal and Carbono has scored to make it 8-2. to two. Our goal scoring recap brought to you by your Midwest GMC truck dealers Bellman, Bomarito, and Brocklin GMC. Well, everybody now can look ahead to Friday night at Keel and Game 7, the deciding game of this Western Conference quarterfinal series. A big hello from everyone here in Vancouver to Bill Restoff back in St. Louis watching and listening tonight. Also, uh, had a nice chat with one of the Hall brothers, Bart Hall, who is here to watch brother Brett tonight. He wanted to say to, hi to his brother, Blake Hall, back in St. Louis. Of course, he's working now for our friends at Annie Guns, a great restaurant out in Chesterfield. Well, the initial penalties right now, Gino Ojek is the only one on the board. He's got five minutes in front of him, so the Blues will end up on the power play. There's still seven minutes and 50 seconds to go in this third period. Could be another 30 to 45 minutes before this one ends. Calgary had a chance to finish off the Sharks tonight in San Jose, but they couldn't do it. San Jose five, Calgary three, that's a final. Those two teams in their Western Conference quarterfinal series will play game seven at the Saddle Dome in Calgary on Friday night. Toronto will be in Chicago for their game seven, and the Blues look like they'll be entertaining Vancouver for game seven in this series. Ken, I don't think we're finished with this game tonight. I, I think we're, we still have plenty of action uh, yet to take place. Sergio Momesto and Basil McRae just having words before McRae went to the bench. Blues have a five minute power play. LaPerriere shoots the puck behind the net. Goaltender Whitmore clears it up the boards and out to center ice. McKinnis shoots it back in. Tekin and touches it. And that's offside against the Blues. The penalties here at 12 10. Anderson two for slashing. Creighton two for roughing and a 10 minute misconduct. Ojek gets two for instigating a fight. Five for fighting. A 10 minute misconduct and a game misconduct. And Linden receives a two minute roughing penalty on the Vancouver side. 
So the Blues have a power play. They are one for four on the power play this evening here in game six. The face off to Curtis Joseph's right. Canucks out shooting the Blues 25 22 but the Vancouver Canucks have gotten many of those shots after they got themselves in a big hole in this contest. Doug Lidster for the Blues gets the puck ahead. Karamnov will circle back on defense. It's Holder and Lidster. Holder has a pass come to him that he doesn't really see and Rutu slides the puck right to Joseph who makes a save. Here's Lidster. Ahead to Karamnov. Not a holder. He's at the red line. Right wing for Roberts. Roberts looking. Passes to the point to Lidster. Near point to Holder. He'll shoot right on. Whitmore the save. And there's a penalty coming up. There'll be a slashing penalty call here with 6.51 remaining in the third period. Hey, Blues fans, remember it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you enjoy the game. So always reach for smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush lights. Now David Babbage will go off for the Vancouver Canucks in front of the net. He gets caught slashing and the Blues will have a five on three for the next two minutes and then they'll continue on the power play for another two minutes and one second. Right in front of the net the long shot. David Babbage 44 was there. I believe it was Vitaly Karamnov who he slashed just prior to the long shot by Bill Holder and the Blues with the five on three. 13.09 the time of the penalty puck comes in front of Kay Whitmore who's come on in the third. Lume takes it to center ice and slides it into the Blues end. The lone Vancouver forward is Christian Rutu. On defense Lume and Hedekin. Here are the Blues in their own end. It's McInnes. Right wing to Carbono. Also Norton, Chasse, and Gilbert on. Carbono into the Vancouver end. Sets up on the power play. Five on three. To McInnes. Now near point to Norton. Ahead on the near side to Gilbert. Blues lead 8 2. Over to McInnes. He'll shoot. And the save by Whitmore. And the Canucks cannot clear. Norton keeps it in. Right point to McInnes. Now to Norton in the near corner. A pass to Gilbert. Greg Gilbert with a puck. Sends it in front. And Carbono at the edge of the crease can't make the connection. He had a wide open net. McInnes near point to Norton. Blues have the two man advantage. McInnes shoots off Hedekin to Carbono to Norton. He works in a drive off the chest of Whitmore. And he snags the puck in his trapper. And plays stop with 5.55 to go here in game number six. And I like what Mike Keenan has done on this five on three. He's had an excellent performance out of the Blues players tonight but he gets a five on three and what does he do he puts three players out on the ice as forwards that normally don't get a chance to play the power play. Guy Carboneau, Denny Chasse in front and Greg Gilbert three Warriors that have really played tremendous hockey tonight. I believe he's rewarding them by giving them this five on three power play time. Now the Perrier Holland Tikkanen. Holder at the left point, Lidster at the right point, Holder gets the puck, shoots right on, and Whitmore makes the save and smothers another rebound. He's also putting players out there that'll irritate the goaltender a little bit more. Chasse was set up in front of Kay Whitmore. Kay Whitmore was hitting him with his stick, using his glove, and now with Ian LaPerriere and Tekin it out there, you know they're going to be in front of the net, and Bill Holder getting some power play time as well. Since game one, a 2-1 Blues victory, we have seen tons of goals in this series, and it has surprised a lot of people. Blues control, right point, Lidster ahead to Tekin and trying to add to an 8-2 lead. Back to the blue line to Lidster, side of the net in front to Hall, and he blasts one high and wide. Holder pinches in, gets checked. Now in the corner, Jason Cullimore, and he'll shoot the puck the length of the ice. Remember, Vancouver won a game with five. They won a game with six goals. The Blues won here with five. Vancouver won game five with six goals, and the Blues have eight tonight. What a surprise. Now Karamnov shoots the puck in. In the corner, Alec out to the right point to Lidster, straight away to Holder. He'll move in, shoot, and the puck deflects to the corner off Dane Jackson. And he wheels and shoots the puck the length of the ice. Now the Canucks are two men short. Five on three. Babich about ready to come on. Karamnov shoots and it deflects 
a putter and into the crowd. Too many men on the ice for Vancouver. They've got four guys out on the ice. Yeah. There's still two seconds to go in the Babbage penalty, 2.03 to go in the Ojik penalty. They've got to have a penalty for too many men on the ice. That's exactly right. They were playing at five on four with two men in the penalty box. And referee Bill McCreary goes to the penalty bench with 4.53 to go here in the third period. Bill Holder with the long shot from the point. Okay, Whitmore, it doesn't quite get to him, but he breaks his stick on the leg of Vitaly Karamna. Boy, he's been vicious. Anyone around the crease, and Whitmore has really been using his stick on the Blues player. That's not a slash, is it? No, that's a chop. <laughs> that's a chop. A slash is when you don't break your stick. Here he just chops him, and his stick breaks in half. You think game seven will be interesting? Oh, will that be fun Friday night, won't it? Oh, baby, I'm ready right now. Let's, I just soon fly home tomorrow, play tomorrow night. Why wait? Boy, that'll be great. Game seven. Should be a low-scoring game. Yeah, about nine to eight. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be nothing, nothing in the second overtime. Wow. <laughs> we have no predictions on game seven, except you ought to be there. So a penalty that will be served by Oksuda. Now they face off in the Vancouver end. The too many men on the ice penalty. Now they get a man back, but they're still two men short. Five on three. Chasse in front, and the puck deflects wide off Gilbert. Now the fans start to throw debris on the ice. Right point to McInnes, left point to Duchesne. Now to McInnes, side of the net. Carbono, and he loses the puck. And here is Rutu. The Canucks are two men short. Boy, Tim Hunter is on the ice, killing this penalty for Vancouver, and he is hacking and whacking and slashing and cross-checking everything he can. That is send Basil McRae out and let him put an end to it. Now the Blues do Shane, right point to McInnes, back to Duchesne, far side, Carmen to McInnes, he shoots, deflection, a save, and the rebound goes wide. Now there'll be another penalty against Vancouver. Joseph to the bench, oh, and a pass, and Gilbert steers the puck wide, gets it to Carbono in front, Duchesne, a shot, sliding save by Whitmore. Oh, and then Hunter throws a big right hand at Chasse after an initial penalty was being called against Vancouver. Remember, Ojek still has a minute one to go in that five-minute penalty and a minute to go in the Oksuda penalty, which... He's serving for too many men on the ice. Well, Hunter should get five minors on this because first he goes after Greg Gilbert. He'll slash him. Hunter's moving back and forth. First, there's Greg or Chasse in front with the cross check. Two cross checks on Greg Gilbert. He'll keep going. He'll end up behind the net, still slashing and cross checking away. Gilbert again. There's one hack. There's another one right there. Another one. He goes back to the front. Another cross check on Denny Chasse. High stick. Two punches to the back of the head. Three punches to the back of the head. I said five minors. Pardon me. There should have been. He should have 14 minutes in penalties. He is going to get a double minor with 351 to go. That's where you blow the whistle right away, regardless if they have the puck. You blow the whistle in a game that's 8-2, make the call, throw them out of the game, and keep some sanity what's left of this game. The Canucks, a minute left in the too many men on the ice penalty, a minute one in the five-minute major to Ojek, and now four minutes in penalty time to Tim Hunter. I guess the Canucks are somewhat frustrated. They came into this game knowing if they played well, they would most likely be able to put an end to the Blues. But it just has not happened. It has been all Blues tonight. They lead at 8-2, to two and they're looking ahead to home ice for Game 7 on Friday night. Roughing for Hunter after his cross-checking penalty. Then he gets a 10-minute misconduct. So he gets 14 minutes in penalties. <laughs> you were right there. I was right. I just wasn't sure of all the calls. We're getting ready for a face-off <laughs> to the left of the Vancouver net. Remember, there are tickets available for Game 7 Friday night at Keel Center. There just are not that many opportunities to see a Game 7. They're few and far between. 
Well, we've talked about this Blues team all season long as being a team, especially on the road, that have trailed and they've been able to come back and win games when they're down by a couple of goals. And even going into this game tonight, there was that quiet confidence. The heads were up. They had a team dinner last night with Mike Keenan, and the coaches and the players. This morning, the same thing. The talk was positive. Mike Keenan wasn't saying much to anyone at all this morning, but they came out like a group that knew they were going to win. They took the play to Vancouver, got them on, them, on their heels right away in the first period, and it's been their game. Now Holder with a puck in the Vancouver end of McKinnis. Back to Holder. It's five on three. McKinnis a shot. Whitmore a good pad save. And in the corner, it's Gilbert. Gilbert, Chasse, and Carbono to Chasse a shot. Another pad save by Whitmore. Now McKinnis with a puck. Gives it to Holder. Gets it back. Shoots. And it deflects over the net. Carbono goes after the puck behind the net. Leaves it for Gilbert. Out to the right point. Here's McKinnis. Near point to Holder. Over three minutes to go in the third. McKinnis side of the net to Gilbert. He works in front. Gives the puck to Holder. He shoots. Pad save. And with a puck loose, Bill McCreary stops play as he lost sight of the puck. And there's 3-11 to go in the third period. 20 seconds to go in one Vancouver penalty. 21 in the other. And four minutes in the third Vancouver penalty. Looks like the Blues will finish on the power play, huh? I, 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 I sense that that's the way the game is going to end. The Blues have an 8-2 lead. They have tied a club record for goals in a playoff game at 8. And they're about ready to get another one. Here's Holder. Right point to McKinnis. Now to Holder. He'll shoot right on a save. Rebound and Gilbert stop. And Whitmore has been brilliant in goal here with his team shorthanded. Well, he has been tremendous having to make saves. The Blues taking the shots from the blue line. Bill Holder with the long shot. Makes the first save, but the Blues are there. Greg Gilbert right on the side of the net trying to get the rebound, and Whitmore is able to make that save as well. So the Blues not making any personnel changes tonight with the exception of Vitaly Karamnov going in for Brendan Shanahan who broke his ankle in game five and the Canucks very similar though they put Dane Jackson back in tonight for Alex Stoyanov face off Blues win it in the Vancouver end Norton straight away he'll shoot and a dazzling save by Whitmore then Rutu and Alec collide Pedican brings the puck to center ice. They get one man back, Oksuda. He's tripped by Lidster, and there'll be a penalty against Doug Lidster for interference. That comes with 2.44 to go. Now Vancouver gets another player back, and the four minutes on Hunter remain, and the Blues' Lidster will go off. That'll be four on four, and center ice. Oksuda had just come out of the bench, or out of the penalty box, I should say. And Litzer was there, just takes the feet out from under him. And Litzer goes off. 2.44 to go now in the game. The Blues leading it 8-2. to two, And we'll have four on four for the next two minutes. Well, when the Blues hit the road, that's when you've got to head for the hockey coverage in the post-dispatch. Keep up with all the action. Call for home delivery at 340-8888. Both teams are shorthanded. And the puck at center ice. McKinnis backs into his own territory. Up to Gilbert. Ahead to Carbono. The puck gets away. Canucks can't control. And Gilbert flips it into the Vancouver zone. There's 2.22 to go in game six. At center ice, Vancouver. The puck knocked away. Carbono takes it. Litzer, the interference penalty at 17-16. And the puck deep in the Vancouver end. Yerke Lume ahead to Ronning at center ice. Not a Jeff Cortnall. He'll leave it for Babbage. He'll carry in. Knocked away by Holder, and Norton has the puck. Norton gets hooked down. Holder advances to Ellick. Over the line in the left wing. He'll give the puck to Holder at the blue line. Both teams are shorthanded. Far side, Norton a blast. And it deflects off the stick of Jeff Cortnall and into the crowd. And play stopped with a minute 45 to go. In the third period, Blues out shooting Vancouver 32-25, and they lead 8-2. to Well, the Blues deserve a tremendous amount of credit coming into this game tonight, facing elimination. 
Vancouver knew that they had to start quick and try and take the early lead. The Blues just went right after them. Right from the first faceoff, the Blues were able to get the puck into the zone, forecheck. You could tell right away that they were going to be on their game tonight. The way they were moving to the puck, beating Vancouver to the loose pucks, getting the scoring opportunities, and they just continued that throughout this game. Now they cannot zone the puck in their own zone. Again, it's four on four. Hedekin pressured by Carbono. Then in the corner, Jackson loses the puck. Carbono out to the right point. Holder partially fans. Oh, the puck trickles wide with Gilbert there trying to get a handle on it. Canucks to center ice. Sergio Momesso. A pass for Hedekin almost catches him in the face. Then Holder ahead to Carbono. He's checked by Cullimore. It's an offside play. And the whistle stops the action with a minute eight to go here in game six. Elsewhere tonight, Toronto, with less than 10 minutes to go in the third period, led Chicago 4 2. And then Toronto on a Randy Wood goal wins in overtime. They'll play game seven Friday night at United Center. At San Jose, the Sharks stay alive, defeating Calgary 5 3. Craig Janney with a pair. They'll play game seven at the Saddle Dome in Calgary on Friday night as the Canucks and Blues meet in game seven at Keel Center on Friday night. Under a minute to go, Blues shoot the puck in. Now Karamnov steals it in the Vancouver end. Karamnov works back behind the net. Karamnov looking to come in front. Goes to the corner, chased by Cullimore. Karamnov hooked down, and at center ice, Vancouver Rutu. Blues get a man back. Vancouver shorthanded a shot by Rutu, deflects over the net. Essa Tekin in a big night for the Blues. Four points, two goals, two assists. Paul, two goals and an assist. Now a quick shot, and the Roberts effort stopped by Whitmore, and the Canucks clear to center ice. Chasse with a couple of assists. Carbono also a goal and an assist. The Blues have just had an outstanding performance to stay alive in this best of seven series. The puck in the Blues end, 10 seconds remaining. Knocked behind the net. McKinnis chases it in the corner. Five seconds to go. Long pass by Roberts. Lume back in his own end. And let's go back to St. Louis. The Blues, a resounding victory tonight. Here in Vancouver, they congratulate Curtis Joseph. The Blues tie a team record for goals in a playoff game with eight. They have come through when they have needed to the most this season, and tonight they needed to in the biggest way possible. So it's game seven, Friday night at Keel Center, and the Canucks and Blues will be ready to go, and we know that you will be also. What a game here, the final, the Blues eight. The Canucks, too, and we'll return to Vancouver after these messages. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Game six of the Western Conference quarterfinal series between St. Louis and Vancouver goes to the Blues as they route the Canucks in Vancouver 8-2, to two, and the series is tied at three wins aside. Let's go to our third period summary. The Blues add insult to injury with a pair of goals. Tikkanen, his second, a power play goal at 8.34 from McInnes and Hall. Carbono, his first of the playoffs at 11.24 from Chasse and Joseph. The Blues hold the Canucks to only five shots on goal in the third period. Shots on the night, 35-25. The period summary brought to you by Hardy's, starring the best fried chicken in the game today. Welcome back to the Pacific Coliseum. Ken Wilson along with Joe Micheletti. Bruce Affleck is here and uh, we're glad you have stayed up late. I feel a lot better, I must admit. <laughs> I, 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 so felt, do I. I felt a lot like a fan uh, all day yesterday and all day today. Uh, nervous, obviously. Uh, fearful that we might be watching our last Blues game of the season here tonight. But uh, now all is better and uh, we'll be back in St. Louis for game seven on Friday night but it was a heck of a performance. Oh it was just a, a, a tremendous performance by the Blues. They came out they did a number of things that they hadn't done in the previous games. They were very disciplined so they weren't taking bad penalties. They they started four checking again and forcing Vancouver to dump the puck along the boards instead of up the middle with those long passes that we've seen in previous games. They protected Curtis Joseph. He had some difficult saves tonight but not too many difficult saves so they did a good job around him keeping the shots to the outside. And when you look throughout the lineup, they got a tremendous effort from everyone, from Curtis uh, Joseph on down to John Casey and the rest of them. Yeah, and that early lead, certainly a, a confidence builder 
for Curtis Joseph. Let's turn now to our Bush three stars. You talk about veterans. Guy Carboneau was tremendous tonight, killing penalties. He had one goal and one assist on the night. He's the number three star. Brett Hall, who scored the first two goals of the game and added one assist, is the number two star. And Essa Tikkanen said this morning he wanted to score a couple of games tonight and wanted to get the game winner. He did that. Two goals, the game winner, and also added a couple of an assist for a four-point night. Tremendous evening for Essa. Yeah, Essa Tikkanen, great outing. Brett Hall, those two first period goals. He just has that knack, then he gets them when you've got oh. to have them over and over. Beautiful to watch, well, isn't it? Puts himself in the position, the puck's there, it's in the net. Uh, it's, it's easy. It's amazing. Well, Bruce Affleck, when the evening started, and uh, I'm sure there was apprehension on everybody's mind, uh, we talked a little bit about the fact that this uh, Vancouver team had scored so many shorthanded goals against the Blues. And I think it's still a concern, but the Blues end up getting the shorthanded goal tonight, and obviously uh, a great game by the Blues in this game. You know, We've tried, we're tired of making predictions, obviously, because they've all gone wrong. But you look at this series, and there's only been one scoreless period. That was the third period in game one. You'd think between these two teams, obviously, there'd be a little more defense, just a lot of goals. And, of course, they're in the Blues' favor tonight. But this is why you play during the regular season to get home ice advantage, and it will be with the Blues Friday night in St. Louis. We're going to go to the play of the game, and it's uh, really one where the Blues had a 3 nothing lead. Take a look at our Bush play of the game. Cornell comes back to get a power play goal for Vancouver, but then the Blues come right back 40 seconds later to get the goal. And a great job by Adam Creighton and the Blues in the Vancouver zone between Gilbert and Anderson. But Creighton using his size, his weight, his strength, and just wraps around on the play. McLean is down, and he gets the goal. A big goal by Adam Creighton, his second in the series, and gave the Blues back a three-goal lead. The lead was 4-1, to one, and that's our Bush play of the game. Thank you very much, Bruce. And that's the story here in Vancouver tonight. A very happy Curtis Joseph and a happy Blues team headed back to St. Louis. Our thanks to Tom McLaughlin, our producer director for Bruce Affleck and Joe Micheletti. This is Ken Wilson. Thanks for joining us at the Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver, where the Blues stay alive by winning game six, eight to two over the Vancouver Canucks. St. Louis Blues Hockey has been a presentation of Bud Sports through the facilities of KPLR TV and KMOX Radio. Our next telecast here on KPLR TV St. Louis 11 will be Friday night from Kiel Center. Game number seven and that telecast will start at 730 Central Daylight Time. Playoff hockey has been brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Your Missouri, Illinois, Lincoln Mercury dealers, McDonald's, proud sponsors of the Blues. Have you had your break today? Southwest Airlines, fly Southwest, the low fare airline. Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. The Discover card, it pays to discover. Your Midwest GMC truck dealers, Bellman, Bomberito, and Brockland GMC. Boatman's with home equity loans designed to do just one sensible thing, save you money. Your neighborhood, St. Louis Chrysler Plymouth dealers. CMS Home Mortgage Corporation. When the bank says no, CMS says yes. Party, starring the best fried chicken in the game today. And by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. <laughs>